Is, there we go. Now it's working. Whoever said, how long did it take before he sucks his audio? You are cursed. Because it was working perfectly when I tested it 20 minutes ago, and then I went to run it now, and it choose my audio devices again. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm really excited to go through these strike group, strike group ships with you. Uh, can someone confirm that you can hear me, please? Because I'm getting very paranoid that you can't. Okay, you can hear me. Fantastic. How is the music coming through? Is it too loud? It should be nice and quiet and chill in the background. I am really excited to look at these ships. Um, <laughs> there will be bloodshed in this phase. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I am really excited for this. Are we ready? Oh, no, Jeff, you can't hear me. I'm sorry. Excellent. Let's jump into the ship builder. We've got some ships to get through. I would, if possible, love to get through every one of these tonight because then we can just get through with the voting and get on to phase three. By the way, if you have not done it yet, the voting forms for the ballistic and the flower are linked in the description of this video. If you want to take two seconds to jump on and do your votes there, that's great. Uh, one thing we're going to be doing for all votes going forward is we've noticed that some of the ships that have been submitted unfortunately don't hit the requirements for the class that we're asked for. Some of them are a bit over budget, some of them are a little bit underage. I've decided I'm not going to take them out of the vote. What I am going to do though is I'm going to get a wee stamp on them in the voting forms to show that they maybe are over budget or under range so that you can maybe make your decision a little bit but we're not going to do that for the courageous, the ballistic or the flower because those votes are already live. Um, you want to see me play the game? That's why I'm trying to get through this as much as possible. Okay, let's kick off. I want to start with the Borays because I think the Borays is an interesting ship to play around with. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the default Bore unlocked here. Um, let me just grab the stats for that because I want to get it up to compare. Uh, two seconds. I fleet Bore. Also, a cat has snuck into the recording room with me, so we may hear it in the background. So the Bore, as we all know and love, is, is a big fat ship. It's got radar, it's got elint, it's primary armor, it has two 80, 380mm cannons, four 37mm. Um, it's a pretty bulky, pretty beefy ship. The biggest downside being, of course, that it has that... Um, oh, some people's names are showing up. I can remove people's names if you're, if you're worried. It's just, I don't know how they've ended up on the back of them. Try, I, hopefully it's not a big problem. But let's jump straight into it. So first we've got, um, we've got the AGS, um, the, the Yabuku. Uh, it's our first ship that's shown up. Now we're gonna have to do something about the the Dentat here because it's got the wrong, um, the, the, it's got some Russian characters in here. But the AGS system ships, if you remember correctly, are um, cursed, not cursed ships, but cur ships that use heretical building methods. Um, and this is definitely looking heretical. Uh, we've got a very interesting spaced design around the ammo boxes. Um, let's just check the, let me just reload this. We'll check it for requirements. So uh, as um, as TRM has pointed out, we have a budget of 72,565. So this is within budget. And we have a range requirement of uh, 2445. So this is this is five kilometers um, over range, which is perfect. This is the minimum range. Um, this has a very, very long range. This is what this is what makes the Borea a hard ship to build around is the range requirement. But on this ship, we have Elant. We have a four sprints. Um, we have two... 180 Sarmats with very little of them blocked. Are there any other weapons here? That looks to be it. I don't think we've got any active defenses either. We've got escape pods hiding in that little launch bay there. I really like the placement of those. Does it look like we've got any, any escape pods? So, um, four Sarmats. I see two of them here. Of course, because it's double barrels. You make a good point, many enemies. Uh, this looks like a cool ship. I wonder how well this design would show up. I think the idea is if the ammo gets destroyed, it's not going to blow up any components around it. Two on top. Oh my goodness, I didn't see them. There are eight sarp. Wow, that's a lot of firepower. They just planted it. I think I thought they were thrusters. Well spotted. Um, this is an extreme amount of, of firepower. I just wonder what the behavior of these ammo racks is going to be. Um, but this is the um, Yoko, Yoboku by um, Kamwat or AGS Systems, which I really like the look of. This is this is a cool ship. We also have um, two FCRs. So we have a guidance of two. We can launch two sprints at a time, and we have the Elint as well. So it's got the it's got the, the sensors that it needs as well. It looks like it can land. It looks like it's like shouting. It's very heretical. I I like it a lot. I love the way the thrusters are appearing in these, these sections. Um, it's a lot of firepower. Now the game is going to crash when I load this ship. I wonder if I can fix it by just renaming it here. No, let's not worry about that. The game will crash when I load this. Oh, it didn't crash. Okay, so apparently like some, it likes some um, 
Russian characters. I do have lore for this, bear with me. So this is a Corazon Ray ship. This is the um, Dintat. I don't know how to, quite how to pronounce that. Um, but let me, so um, playback, playback begins. <clears throat> Show me the next design, Flynn. No, that's, there's no way that passes muster. What, why? Vimple's kit, right? What's her name again? Katran? Sigh, fine. What is the range and budget? Shit, she can count. All right, give it here. I'll pass it up the line. I know that, I know that, but I'm not going to risk a transfer to Kiva over this. Let the approval board be the one to tell her no. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just get the stats of the ship up. So that was actually a dialogue log from the design process or, or the design side approval of this ship. We have a range of 2448. It's just over the minimum range. It's in budget by the looks of it. And we have how many Vimples? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Vimples. Um, it has a super armored bridge, as people have have shown. Um, how does logistics and money work on High Fleet? How do you mean Hafidez to such a? Do you mean how does it do it for the AI or for the player? What else have we got here? We've got a top speed of two hundred nineteen kilometers per hour. That's a pretty good speed for a ship this big. We've got a lot of RD fifty nines. I think this many RD fifty nines will actually make it quite maneuverable in combat. Um, I love the two uh, massive 404 alien things, uh, almost as knees here. We've got lots of escape pods hidden away. Any active defenses? I don't think we've got any active defenses here. No, this is a big, massive ship. This is a lot of DACA. Like, this is a serious... If you are you do not fly above this ship, also the big radar on top. I almost missed that. The MR-700 has got the massive radar. You do not fly above this ship. If you fly above this ship, you are getting obliterated because these, th these can all shoot... If they're all angled really nicely above. It's a shame. So there's something behind this engine it feels that's, that's blocking. I think it's just, it's just showing that it's blocked by the uh, fuel tank. It's a cool, cool ship. Um, so that was the... Uh, that was the... I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm calling it the Purr by Corazon Ray. Uh, really blocky as well. Lots of armor. It looks very well um, protected with good, good sensors. Yeah, it's nice. All right, next up, we've got the Ultra Courageous R by Braveheart Productions. This is a continuation of Braveheart Productions' production or, or design philosophy of every ship. Kind of needs to emulate um, in, in the shops or for, for fleets. Um, AI fleets kind of have infinite ammo. Shops do not regenerate ammo, um, and you have infinite HE ammo, so they, they don't regenerate ammo. So let's check out the Ultra Courageous R. Wow, that, that looks really good. <gasps> I just saw the army and armament. Okay, we've got Palash, four Palash. We've got uh, eight Zenith. We've got two Vimple. Four, sorry, we've got four Vimple, which are covering inside the fill tanks. We also have two A220s here, which obviously made for shooting down. Um, the bottom is pretty well protected. We've got flares down here as well, which unfortunately AI won't use, as I always say, but they're still nice to have. Um, we've got quite a lot of F FSS here as well, all around the fuel tanks to try and stop them from catching fire. We have a search radar up here. Um, this is this is this is looking pretty good for a um, for a courageous style ship. I like it. Uh, RD 59s, of course. We're using D30s as our static engines. Top speed of 151 kilometers per hour. Um, no, no, it's okay, Hafiz. Thank you for asking. I'm really happy to answer any questions I can. It's well within budget, like it's under budget by a lot. And Elint as well. Um, yeah, I see the Elint as well. Crash test. This is a cool ship. Four seven. There's a lot of guns on this ship. Um, it'll have a decent split of fire with 57 millimeters firing in between A220 barrages. And if you get caught in one of these barrages, you are in big trouble. There's also this little window. If you go right above the ship, you will get missiled as well, which is something to watch out for. That's a that's a cool design. Um, I like these. These a lot of people have been using something like this where they've got a bracket with missiles and engines stuck inside it, and I really like the design. I like the way it looks. It almost looks like they extend out like the launch bays on the Galactica. Um, that's a cool looking ship. Exactly, if you're flying cruisers, it'll be much harder to dodge if it gets in above or below you. And it's gonna do a lot of damage either side. And eight Zeniths, yeah. There's a Zeniths hidden down here, which are hard to see. Um, that's a that's a really heavily armored Bore. I like it a lot and it's well under budget, which makes it very appealing for the uh, Garati um, the, the, uh, Procurement Bureau. All right, next up, we've got the Astral from Cygnus. I have some lore for this as well. I'm gonna do the lore, I'm gonna do voices because I'm having fun with it. It's, it looks maneuverable for light cruiser and looks like it's got a good speed. Let me just go back. I didn't actually confirm the speed um, to the stream. 151 kilometers per hour is nothing to sneeze at. And I can see the two RD-59s in the center will allow it a lot of maneuverability left, right, and up and down. It should be really nice. All right, so next up we've got the Cygna ship. Um, the um, Cygna, Cygna shipyards responding to a bid for dealing with potentially larger hostile vessels and the excess of jet uh, use of excess use of jet dropped 250 kilogram bombs. Sorry, I think this is like a typo here. Let me start again. 
Signal shipyards, responding to a bid for dealing with potentially larger hostile vessels, and the excessive use of jet drop 250 kilogram bombs, colloquially known as the Saini Special, has tasked its designers with dealing with this change in fleet doctrine. The response on sector defense level is the vessel's divide, divine, built to take high caliber fire into its own, and the patron, a vessel boasting enough firepower and armor to deal with a fleet on its own. We'll look at those later. But in a call for longer range patrol craft, the Astral was developed on its dedicated radar equipped hunter killer, with a radar range of up to 750 kilometers. The Citadel boasts its own sensor suite and dual Sarmat 180mm cannons for punching through armor. Okay, it's going through all of his ships. So we're just looking at the Astral here. So they're all mixed together. So I tried to I gave away a little bit of information there. But let's check out the Astral. Oof. I, this is a cool fuel tank design. We've got skate pods. What have we got? We've got Vimples. Vimples are very, very um, common so far in these builds. We've got two DNA Molots with pretty good field of fire if you're looking up and around. We've got four Zeniths. Um, 142 kilometers per hour, 70,000 credits, 2556 range, so it's in range and it's over, it's under, it's, over, it's on budget. Um, we've got the big search radar, which is his main job, four mullets. What are the other two? Down here, well spotted, yes. Tucked really tightly into the fuel tank, which if I remember right, is actually a Cigna shipyard speciality, is the use of a large fuel, fuel tank and tucking the guns in underneath to get as wide a field of fire as possible. Um, big, big legs. Again, it's a nice looking ship. I feel a, I was going to say it was undergunned when I thought it only had the two mollets, but the four mollets with almost complete field of fire is, is it's going to be hard to fight because it is so heavily armored. Um, the bridge is pretty well protected. Obviously, if this catches fire, you're in trouble, but it's so protected the center. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you're right, Crash Test. Not only are they good PD, but they also work very, very well on mass just to deal DPS. Um, like an up armored, um, up, up armored Archangel. And the Archangel is already a pretty armored ship. It is one of the hardest... Um, of these ships to fight. You've got a lot of armor in place, as many places you can. Good use here to protect the engines as well with this curved piece. This is a, a design note to take a note of is that you can actually put a half um, triangle piece in over the engine and not block it and still keep it protected from shots coming in from this angle. It's actually quite well shot trapped there. I like that a lot. And they've used it again here. And you can also use those half pieces reversed on this side as well. Cool ship. Um, definitely a sort of quarter angle fighter. Uh, it looks like it'll take a lot of pounding on the top. Yeah, the Arch Archangel does have double armored armor and it does have armor gaps as well because it's designed as a vanilla ship. All the vanilla ships have flaws. Um, there is a little block. Okay, there's a little bit of block on the thrust, but I think it's enough to honestly, yeah, it's it's worth it, I think. Okay, next up, we've got the Duke of Ur by Ensign Foil, which also has some lore. All right. Um, ooh, inspired from three shipwrecks uncovered in the northern beaches of Garrett, these ships are a sight to behold. Not only magnificent in appearance, but also effective in combat. The Duke of Ur is inspired from a mid-sized shipwreck. It has a balanced priorities of good range and an arsenal of eight 130mm guns. These ships are usually seen in a very important figure's private militia, but that doesn't stop the gathering from acquiring a few. Let's have a look at the Duke of Ur with its unreal armament. <laughs> oh <laughs> where are the eight oh i see them one two three four five six seven eight it has eight guns it has sails it has a crow's nest which actually is full of sensors i think it's beautiful <laughs> this might be one of the best ships i've ever seen <laughs> Can you imagine fighting this? I, I need to see I need to see what it looks like in combat. I need to see straight away what it looks like in combat. Oi, Avast! <laughs> Look at it! I hope you can see it well. That's a lot of firepower. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just enjoying watching a pirate ship fly around. No, I'll tell you what it isn't. It isn't very maneuverable. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. What a ship! I can't wait to see the rest of them. The broadside is pretty decent. <laughs> the high fleet flying Dutchman. Oh, the Duke of Ur. The fuel tanks just go on fire. <laughs> this is amazing. This is so good. Look at, look at the configuration of the escape pods here, and there's escape pods at the top of the mast as well. <laughs> These just these fuel tanks just catch fire instantly, so you've got flaming sails. 
What a ship, Ensign Foil, you legend. This needs an honorable mention, if nothing else. Imagine a task force of these. I can't wait to see the, what are the other ships? The other ships Ensign Foil has made is the Prince of Kiva and the Ark of Garat. So we need to watch out for them. Um, I've got a feeling the Ark of Garrett is an Archangel rebuild. The Blazing Sail. <laughs> what a ship. Wow. I'm so excited. Yeah, the um, these are the, the sails are, are radio antenna. I uh, <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, this has to be... Maybe not... Oh, I just love it. Um, I think... Do we... Yeah, we've got everything so far. Okay, next up... Next up, we've got the Duke of our resubmission. Oh, no. Um, I missed that. So let's, this is the resubmission. I don't know what the difference is, but this is the one that will go forward to the vote. There was obviously a slight thing they changed to fit this in. Yeah, the British Navy got a new engine. Oh. This, 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 this could be... We could maybe slip this in as a prize ship. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Take the guns off it and just have it as one of the prize ships it generates. All right. Next up, we've got the, um, the Beetle from Fellington. Let's check this out. I, I still, I just, I just love it. It's such a fun ship. Notice that there's actually a flag here as well with this corner piece that doesn't need to be here. It's just so good. All right, let's check out the, the Beetle from Fellington. I'm sorry, Fellington, that you have to follow up the hat. It's a very hard fight to follow, but let's see this. All right, we've got AK-100s. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six AK-100s. Two A-37s on each side. Don't think we've got any active defenses. We've got a, a radar here. We've got Elint. Lots of sensors on this ship, which I'm really liking to see. Um, no active defenses. Top speed of 118. Range of 2453. Uh, price 67840. Uh, so it's it's got the range and it's very cheap. It may be a little bit undergunned compared to the other ships we're seeing with the six um, AK-100s, considering the two down here can unfortunately not shoot up. Um, but if you want to bring a lot of fuel to your strike group, if you want a tanker that can fight, here's your fighting tanker. And not only can it fight for you, but it can detect the enemy at long range, and it can also pick up the radar signals. It's pretty good. And yeah, I should say, give this prox fuse. And it's a much scarier gladiator, because it could probably last a lot longer in combat. I like it. That's a good ship. Thank you very much for that, um, Bellington. That's cool. All right, next up, we've got the Bore series from Kipco. So just a reminder to everyone, Kipco produce a standard variant and then they produce other variants that off that base design. So we've got the Bore 1 here. We've got the Bore 1A, which is the up-armored version. And then we've got the Bore W plus S minus, which is an upgraded weapon speed lowered version. So let's check out the Bore 1. Wow. Okay. We've got two, two one, Mark 1 180s. We've got one, two, three, four 37 millimeters with a good spread of fire. We've got four RD-59, so it's got a really powerful internal engine setup. Almost 200 kilometers per hour. It's got range of 2125. I think it's below range. Yeah, it is. Under budget, though, you could probably get it up to range quite easily um, by just adding some more fuel tanks in here, probably. Um, this looks like a good... What this looks like to me is just a, a good baseline to build off of, which is what Kipco have done. So we'll just leave this one behind right now. We'll check out the Kipco Bore 1A, which is the up-armored version. Okay, so this version is within range, and I think it's within budget. We've got a Mark 500 radar and an Elint on a just basically an um, expendable mast out here. We've got more spaced armor, which is really interesting to see. I wonder how this plays out in combat. And it just has a lot more armor. And more guns as well. So we've got two Mark 1... We've got... Two A four A thirty sevens and two hundred eighty millers. I don't see more guns. Um, where, does anyone else see where the other guns are? I see the same same guns as before. Fire resistance. I think you're right. I think it would not. The FCS um, layout is actually very nice and very well thought out. It has a very good layout of fire suppression systems here, um, covering all the engines and all the fuel tanks with redundant ones. Um, ammo is the same as well. Yeah. Uh, no new guns, I thought so. It's okay, it's okay, Straw Man. Some of these hard, some of these ships are hard to read. All right, so that's the up armored version. There's also the up gunned lower speed version. Let's check this out. Okay, this one has three 180 millimeter cannons. There's a new one added up here. Same amount of seaways by the looks of it. Um, it is within range and budget requirements as well, which is interesting considering the the, the basic model wasn't. Um, we've got an extra layer of armor here, I think, which is very nice. Um, it looks like one of those ships that's just going to last forever. You can almost afford to lose this lower bit and still be able to fight with this top bit up here. 
Uh, it's, it's quite an effective design. Obviously, we're missing the budget for one last escape pod here, which is a shame, but escape pods are expensive um, when you use them. Um, so, uh, uh, Mima, uh, how do I say this? Mima, Mima, Mima uh, you can submit them on, um, oh, I need a link to the, the phase, the, so I'm only taking, I'm take, only taking submissions on a very set amount of ships right now, but there is a link to it on, I don't think it's in the description of this video, unfortunately, um, but I, phase three submissions are still open. Let me just check the, the video description. Don't think they're available. Um, no, I, do, I haven't got the link in the video description yet, but I can add it in. But you need to build very specific requirements to get there. Two seconds, I'll just throw it in. Why not? In messages. I don't have it pinned right now. I'll I'll update it later. I don't look it out just now, but there is a there is a there is a link out there for that. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm happy. I, I want people to get involved. Like that's what the whole point of this is. Um. I'm still looking for Variag submissions for a little bit longer. So if you're interested in building one of those, that is in there. It's a 30,000, um, no, 300,000 uh, credit budget for that ship. Let's have a look at the, um, now this looks like it's been, had its name cut off. Uh, and Liam, uh, I need to check that. But at the moment it's called the Tikta. I'll make sure it's got the right name for the submit, for the actual vote, if that has not been put through correctly. But let's check that out from Liam556. Um, that is a lot of guns, and I guess that's why it's called that. I'm just checking I haven't got any lore for it. I don't. I did actually have some Kipco lore, which I forgot to read out. Um, I will go back over that. Uh, actually, there isn't any lore for this ship, which is fine. That is the right name? Cool. I just want to make sure, because there are people who are sad that their names are getting cut off. Um, this has one. This has eight AK-100s, which are very well protected in the center torso. Center torso. It's not a mech. It looks like a mech. Um, I love these bridge designs that are coming up. Like, yeah, it's got eight sensors, but they're gonna go. Um, it, it, is it bomb proof? It's probably not bomber proof because that gas tank is a big problem. But if you get below it, the firepower is is scary. Let's just have a quick test. Let's see just how much DACA there is on this ship because I wanna I wanna know. I'm just gonna wait, let them load. We've got no flares or anything. All right, we're gonna open up on this ballistic down here. We'll take a couple of hits to see how we do. Okay, here we go. It's 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 pretty sandpapery. Can you imagine this with um, Proxy's ammo. Yeah, that that that's pretty nasty. That's cool. You want to put power shield on top around that budget? Ah, okay, that makes sense. That's that. Look, that took missiles fine. You're armored up all around. That's a scary ship. If that's just allowed to stay in combat, it's going to shoot for a long time. And bear in mind that all of these AK-100s can shoot left and right with no blockage at all, and it can take a few hits for sure. That's a cool ship. Hey, nice guys. Um, the TLDR is you missed the pirate ship, and that's very sad because the pirate ship was a thing of beauty. Um, the Duke of Ur. We'll just quickly show it to everyone who's a late design. This is the Duke of Ur. It may have already won the vote. It actually has a lot of guns as well. <laughs> yeah, if you get on top of that ship, it is defenseless. That is a very good point. Um, so the Tikta does have a little bit of a blind side, which is if you get on top of it, you're in trouble. But you've got to think that the, the AI would probably pilot it up because it wants to get those guns in range and it will push up. Um, that's a cool ship. Thank you for submitting that, Liam556. That looks like it could take a real beating. Oh, actually, check the... Um, range 2.97, that's fine. Price 700,000, perfect. It's within budget and it's over range. Okay, next up we've got the Humac from Sir Ose. Uh, do I have any lore for this? I don't, let's load this up. This is a very compact um, bore, a very, very small silhouette. We've got four Zeniths. We've got two KH-15s, which um, will actually work fine. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six D80 mullets. Um, I, I, T Tavian, I actually really like that idea, but if we do that, we'll probably take the guns off it. But I think that ship should make it into the campaign because it's great. We've also got two 37 millimeters with actually really good coverage. The coverage on this ship is actually really nice because these guns can actually shoot up to a 45 degree angle on the other side. Um, we've got sensors as well. It does a little bit of everything, but it looks like it'll do it quite well. It, if one thing is a downside on it, I was gonna say it's, it's low armor. Um, but it actually has armor behind the bits that are ablative. Um, I'm glad Tarkin Nathan approves. Of course, the ship could win the vote as well. And if it wins the vote, I don't know if we put it as a prize ship too. This is a good ship. It's very heavily armed. It's very heavily armored. 
the 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 constructor has put a lot of thought into the placement of their guns because I'm noticing that these guns have a very good spread above the ship. These 37 millimeters have very good coverage on the sides of the ship. A 37 millimeter, 137 millimeter, isn't like too bad at defending against an incoming missile, but it isn't amazing as well. But I think the AI is a little bit better at maybe holding on to the ammo. I'm not sure. I think this is a solid contender. It's also pretty well protected. None of the explosive components are too near the outside. Um, yeah, Lost Cause, you've 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 got it down pat. It can tank, offer offensive capabilities, work as a tanker, work as a, an elant ship as well, a censored ship. Um, it, it it's a very good ship. I like it a lot. All right, next up we've got the Ifrit from Strawman. I don't have any um, lore for this, but let's check it out. Oh wow. Okay, we've got uh, four Zeniths at the top. We've got two double-barreled 180 Sarmats. We've got a, a spread of three 37 millimeter guns, giving it full coverage, elite, full elite package, full um, 500 kilometer radar package, very well armored again. Um, lots of people going for the sloped armor designs on the top, which I really like. We've got nothing. We've got just crew quarters behind the armor here, which means we don't have any explosive components there. We'll also just note that the Zeniths are mounted within um, reinforced structure here. Uh, one thing that you could have taken advantage of is something that uh, we we discovered during the description. 15 bucks left on the budget, nice. Um, and it's within range as well, is you can actually mount Zeniths behind armor if you get your elevation right, which would be like an extra level of defense for this ship. But it's it's pretty nice. The double the guns on either side are nasty. If you fly above the ship, you are in big trouble. It kind of has that same thing with the Archangel, where you want to stick on one side of it and keep firing it from that side. That's what I was just thinking of Tacos. It does have um, a little bit of a little bit of a weak spot here at the top, but there are ways to get around that if you want to take it to the next level. But even though it's tight within budget, it looks really nice. This is a good ship, Strawman. Thank you. All right, next up we've got the Zootopia X Dyna. Is this a, a ship that you built together um, from Dyna? I do have lore for it. Let's check this out. Um, now, these don't. I, I think I kind of put these together. Um, I'll just read out everything I've got here. There's three, I've got three sets of, of lore, but I haven't set them up for which ship is which, unfortunately. In recognition of the need to maintain military presence in all throughout the Gathering's New Republic, both in its Kievan heart and on the desert fringes, the Lord Governor himself has commissioned a new line of tactical cruisers. With concisely implemented multi-role capabilities, greater speeds by whole factors than the last generation counterparts, and long-range communication slash electronic warfare instrument arrays, these new ships will be able to rapidly respond to developing threats, namely the severe ones, the encroachment of regular armies, or worse, whole airship squadrons. The first of this new field, uh, new crews ready, so this isn't the Unagi. Uh, okay, this one, the, t the notes for this one just say, consider the under budget build as syntax for tank clipping and the two palace units mounted under armor. So uh, let's check out the Zootopia. 71705, it's an aircraft carrier with double um, flight deck for armor. I don't know if it's within range, can someone confirm that for me? We have a mixed um, armament of one 180mm cannon and one 130mm cannon, as well as two A37s. We've got four um, LA-29 strike craft. Um, I don't know how you did this. How did you do this? Or is this just... What are these launch tubes? How did you do this? Um, it's got two R3 missiles, so it, it has long range. But I don't understand. I don't know how you've made the, uh, the launch tubes look like this. Oh, it's got one 37 millimeter, one Vimple. Yes, you are right. I totally overlooked that. It's actually got four different calibers of guns, so four different loading speeds. Unused launch tube design. Okay. Well, I've broken it by removing this. Okay. I've, I've broken this engine. That's my fault. It'll work fine. Those are unused textures. Okay, I wonder how they got them to work fine in my game. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, it's got the radar. We don't have any elint. Um, anything else going on? They mentioned that there is Palash behind armor on one of their builds. I'm not sure if it's this one or not. Double armor here, protecting the fuel tank and the ammo. More flight decks down here. I actually quite like the look of the flight decks. They look like gantries for crew to run around on. I can't see any Palash, but that doesn't mean it's not there. If I, um, you know what I could do? I could grab a Palash. And then if I mount it and then mouse over it, no, there is no other palash on the ship. Okay. So it's a different one. This this looks this looks very interesting because at first it, they just have to add the CRT as tubes. That's extra effort, which I'm impressed by. It, it looks a little bit underwhelming in terms of armament when you first look at it. But what I'm thinking is first of all, because anyone notice that there are already 51s here? I may have broken let, let's just reload it. 
Yeah, so they work now. There are already 51s here that are internally mounted. Um, they're actually elevated enough to fire from inside the armor. Um, and the four different guns, when I mean, the AI has four different ammunition timers to fire off, which means it'll probably keep up a very consistent amount of fire, which is actually a lot scarier than you might think it is. There's also D30 engines here hidden behind these generators. So there's a, quite a lot of heresy in this build in terms of getting everything fit together. Um, there's a lot more going on than you... Uh, than you think about because that that could actually last a long time in combat because everything's very internalized um yes as you say extreme engine heresy oh i just noticed that the the scaredy cat is locked in the room with me i'm just gonna let him out i'll be one second There you go, you got some creaky door um, ASMR there. Much heresy. The more you look, the more I look at this ship, the more I realize like these engines here are also, and also we've got perfect um, coverage on these two guns. It might break when you go to repair it. That is possible. Oh, nice, Linsev, that's a really clever idea. Okay, let's move on from the heresy ship to the um, missile from Arsinius. This name scares me. Oh, that is a lot of missiles. Okay, we have uh, a lot more than I thought. So this might be the record, actually. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It doesn't break the record. 16 is the most. We've got an A220 here. And an A220 here. And an A220 here. So it's all of the missiles all the time. Oh, cool. The AI should be able to break fix it. it. Should be able to repair without breaking itself. That's good. So we've got a lot of, of Zeniths. We've got lots of rockets. We've got our radar. We've got our Elint. Um, looks like a very nicely armored package. The only thing sticking out are the nozzles of these two RD-51 engines. Um, we've got the range requirement. We've got the budget requirement. By the looks of it, someone could confirm that that would be great. Um, I would love to see this in action, actually. This looks pretty, pretty scary. Um, we've got triple layered armored here. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. Triple layer armor on the top. Obviously ready for bombs. Um, an anti-bomber ship for sure. Um... The triple layer armor is something to to take into account. The missiles all have the missile launchers all have pretty good coverage. You'll be firing, you'll have two firing at you most of the time. I like the side mounted escape pods actually on the outside of the armor. So they're also blades of escape pods. They're they're, they're actually armor themselves. Um, yeah, this is this is a cool ship. It kind of fits that bory feel to me as well. And I, this is a, I'm noticing this 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 specifically. Um, is a very common design thing I'm seeing on a lot of ships. I wonder if someone has built one of this and a lot of people have seen it and liked it. Not that I'm saying everyone's anyone's like done anything. Yeah, 38 power. I've never seen it that high. Um, that's a cool ship. Thank you very much for that, um, Arsenius. That's cool. All right, next up, we've got the Mad Cat by... Um, this is the first House Lefay ship that has come up in the build. And I have to say that there's, there's a lot of buzz around um house lefay ships uh from the discord so um let us see what house lefay has to deliver unfortunately i don't oh i do have lore hang on i've got to say I've, I've, I've definitely got lore for this so this is the mad cat um ahem, ahem. after many complaints about how house lefay ships were exorbitantly expensive and that they were nothing more than pointless super ships Tarkan Le Fay ordered the construction of an aggressively cut down variant of the venerable Defiant class cruisers. After many design alterations, the Tarkan reportedly threw down her tools and said that the Imperial procurement officers were a bunch of mad cats for demanding an excellent ship with such a limited budget. Thus, the Mad Cat was born. Effectively a cheaper Defiant with two less guns, the Mad Cat retains her progenitor's excellent firing angles, speed, and protection. However, she features two less Palash APS along her dorsal side and has less armor as a result of cost-cutting directives. Nevertheless, she has over 3,200 kilometers of range and has an FCR with reasonable range. Let's check it out. I, I am concerned about the Hustle Face ships being extremely heavily engineered. Wow. That's how, okay. So interesting. This is the only Bore so far doesn't use any of the upscale engines. It doesn't use an RD-59 or any of the RD-51s, which is interesting to see. We've got two D-80 Molots on both sides of the fuel tanks and a 37 millimeter, two Zeniths. Um, I heard that there's Palash in the armor, maybe? Yes, there's... 
six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Palash. Top speed of 270 kilometers per hour. It's got the range requirement that it needs. It's got the price requirement that it needs. It looks lightly armored, but then you see the Palash. The thing is, Sifrin, yes, it is sad that the strike groups can't split out, but if the strike groups get destroyed, this will just get faster and faster and faster. There is also um, a level two FCR here underneath. Um, shame there's no sprints to take advantage of that that I can see, unless they're hidden away anywhere, and I wouldn't put that that wouldn't surprise me if there were. I don't think there are any sprints. There's an easy way to check, though. If I just grab a sprint. Where are the sprints? Why can't I see them? I've got one space I can mount it in and mouse over it. Yeah, there's no sprints on the design. But you can see that. From that sprint, there's only one place on the entire thing that hasn't got something in it. Yeah, prox use from below will be a problem. It does have Palash to protect it. So it's not going to instantly go down. It does have Palash protection. Although prox use doesn't, doesn't stop. Brooks uses the stuff by Palash. I like the big legs as well. For our first, for our first um, entry, it, it looks really cool. That is the um, Mad Cat from House Le Fay. All right, next up we've got the uh, Mikolev from Grey Wizard Adventurer. Uh, I think I have, I, do I have any? Yes, I do have lore for this. Let's check that out. The Mikolev. Um, this is a nifty little ship that packs a deceptively large punch. The concept was to stack as many, so much redacted that it would pretty much constantly send walls after walls of redacted millimeter, which while a single salvo may not hurt too much for a heavily armored ship, the continuous barrage will surely wear down its victim. Intended to be a supporting cruiser to assist the rest of the strike group in finishing off their prey, its main goal would be lighter ships that the larger guns on the other strike group ships may not be able to hit as well as providing suppressive fire against ships that it may not be able to take on by itself. Let's check out the Mikolaev. That's a lot of firepower. Um, we're looking at six, nine AK-100s and three, four, five Vimple. We have a large 404 Elan Dome. We also have an FCR down here. Um, we have Palash built into the superstructure as well. Um, it's another ship that has FCR, but doesn't have any sprints by the looks of it. Very tall, large silhouette, low armor. In fact, it has no armor, right? It's gonna go down um, pretty quickly. It does have Palash to try and mitigate that a little bit, um, but the budget's obviously not been there to armor it up. <laughs> the legs are awful. The legs are big. They're big, bulky legs. Uh, gotta, it's got to stay up. Uh, that that we, we really need to acknowledge the amount of AK-100s. If you get underneath the ship, you are being evaporated. Um, and it looks like it'd probably shoot down a lot of incoming fire. If this thing had prox fuse, I don't think missiles would ever be able to hit it. I don't think I've ever seen that many... Um, yeah, it does have a long elant range, and it does have that the uh, exactly. Imagine it spawns with Prox. Um, that, that's that's going to be insane. If I just try that Prox fusel on the primary, it's very slow. I want to try and get something below it. I want to just fire a barrage straight down. Okay, here we go. You can't even see it. It's a lot of firepower. Also, don't forget the 57 millimeters as well. That That's cool. It's Greyhound Cruise Complain, is it? That's awesome. So it also, you can also visit Greyhound, uh, Greyhound bases. That's a cool ship. I like the amount of AK-100s. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to die fast to heavy fire, but you've got to hope it doesn't do that. We've already seen the y y Yuboku earlier on. That was the uh, first. Oh, no. Sorry, I need to scroll back down. Uh, which one was this? This was the uh, Mikolev. Okay, next up we've got the Jerash from nickname Toms. Um, do I have lore for it? I don't. Let's check this out. Hey, Floof, by the way. Yeah, hi. It is, you're right, Tacos, that's a very good point, but it's hard to not to get around limited firing arcs with such a small budget. I bet you the bigger ships will have better ways around it. So this is the, um, the Jerash from nickname Toms. It's a six AK-100 ship. Obviously designed for firing up. I like the off-center elant and this, this interesting bridge up here, as well as the antennas over here. It looks like we've got something built into the hull here, but I can't mouse over it. Maybe it's just part of this. Yeah, it's just part of that. It's just come through funny. Okay, I thought there was maybe a sprint or something mounted there. Um, there's another two AK-100s down here, so there's eight AK-100. Thank you, chat. Yeah, I just noticed. Um, I was exploring the ship with my eyes. Uh, no sign of any palash or anything. No sprints or um, flares. 
very bulky, heavy superstructure. It looks really interesting with all of the generators. Uh, is it over-generated? Nope. Oh, 267% power. So it doesn't need all of these generators. They're just to kind of give it that Star Destroyer, I think they're called Gribbly feels. Um, looks like a Mario mushroom. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. The, the AK-100s, I'd be interested to see if there's enough firepower to, to keep up. But um, it, the the internal engines, this all is very ablative. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it looks very effective. It looks very capital ship, which is pretty cool. Uh, thank you very much for that, Nickname Toms. All right, next up, we've got the Relentless from Silent Stack. Let's check that out. Okay, this is a very different style of ship. Uh, yeah, that's a power redundancy for the guns. That, that's, yeah, you're right, Strawman. That's our full design. This has four a 22 millimeter um, rocket launchers with full elevation so they can fire in every direction. Uh, it has two 37 millimeters for Sea Wish duties. It has one, two, three, four, five, six sprints and an FCR. Well, that FCR will get blown off quite quickly, but it'll deal with incoming fighters and bombers. Um, we've got a blade of hull plating on the outside then a thick layer of armor um and then straight through it there's actually uh, another layer underneath the armor here that looks like it mostly has fcs is in it so you're right it has three rockets through Gat gatlings i counted this as a rocket launcher that is actually a gatling um yes thank you everybody i do i spotted that now they're both they both kind of look the same in a, in a way kind of if you're blind like me um that's a very different design to everything we've seen top speed of 96 kilometers per hour i don't expect this to be very maneuverable but uh, it has the range requirements, it has the budget requirements, and three, a two, three 20, 220 millimeter rockets, that's a lot of firepower. If that hits your cruiser, you are in big problems. Um, it does have a random hole in the middle. I think your, your crash test, but for aesthetics, the Ultra Courageous, you know, it, it, have we seen the Ultra Courageous? Which is the one that we saw? Um, yeah, the Ultra Courageous. I think the, the Ultra Courageous has better aesthetics than this. This is this is undeniably a brick, but it looks like a very effective brick. Um, so that's the Relentless from Silent Snack. Next up, we have the Imperial from Tacos. Let me just grab the... Um, yeah, it's probably for elevation, probably as you're right. Let's check this out. Okay. Um, so Tacos has now founded the Atassa Royal Aerospace Company. And now, oh, sorry. We, I said they founded it, and then the first line says it's defunct. A now defunct company based out of Kiva, the Atasa Royal Air Space Company was owned by the Romani Crown, specializing itself in the production of capital ships. During the initial retreat of the Romani Empire from Garat, the company found itself left behind in the chaos and was forcibly disbanded by the encroaching gathering. Most of the company's engineers and staff still remain within Garat. Some have found a living working in local workshops, while others have decided to sell their talents to the gathering. As a result, many of the company's designs are still maintained today by smaller workshops and farmers within Garat and are well represented within the fleets of the gathering. The Imperial 2. Sorry, Lost Cause. I will make sure that is fixed for the voting. I thought I'd managed to fix it, but I must have missed the 2, and I'm really sorry about that. It, to be fair, the only thing I've got in my defense is in the lore, it just says Imperial, but that's still my fault. The Imperial was the company's flagship design, a supremely powerful, purpose-built attack cruiser. The surviving examples of the design are some of the most historied and bloodied cruisers still in operation. Although, unfortunately, most of those examples belong to the Gathering. The centerpiece of the Imperial is its Mark VI... Oh, no, no, it's just a Star Wars reference. Okay, yeah, Imperial 2 Star Wars Stories, gotcha. Uh, is the um, the redacted turret, a redacted barreled 180mm artillery cannon capable of humbling even the largest combatants. The entirely vectored nature of the ship's thrusters also lended a degree of maneuverability in combat, despite the fact that it is uh, encased entirely in armor. What is the width of the brick? Can I see the width of the brick? I can, hang on. Let's just check the brick for floof. We'll just check if it's um, floof friendly. It is 71 by 106, Fluff. Let's check out the Imperial, which has the Squall. The gun is so big that I miss it sometimes, but there is a Squall with full coverage, so it's elevated nicely. So this ship, it, like the House Lafay ship, does not use large fuel tanks so that it can get the coverage on its guns. Uh, we have four Vimples with full coverage, and we have the 180mm with full coverage. Um, it's under range, unfortunately, so I have to give it that under range stamp. Um, we've got a full casing of armor. Uh, just there's so much fuel here, though, and we have how many F FSS? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sevestiful firepower. This is a lot of firepower in a very small, compact design, and the four vector thrusters, as mentioned in the lore, 
will make it quite maneuverable. It's 300 kilometers under range, unfortunately, but we've just put an under range stamp on it. I think it might be popular because it has that 180 millimeter cannon. There was a lot of firepower available there in a very small, compact package. If this ship has a weakness, it's going to catch fire. It should also have Palish. Thank you, Tacos. Let's see if I can spot it. What we'll do is we'll just put a Palish on it. There you go. It's got Palish in the two bottom right and left-hand corners. Oh, really, Lynn? Are you sure you're willing to do that? That would be amazing. If you're willing to do it, I was quite happy just to use the, the stamps you'd already made because I think they're amazing. Um, you don't have to go to all that effort. I really appreciate all the effort that everyone's going to, though. I, I appreciate you all so much. I need to give you a proper shout-out in a stream um, and a video and probably put, put you in the credits of the pack because you've provided so much help in getting this sorted out. But it's a cool ship, Tacos. I'm very excited to see that you've managed to fit the, the Mark VI um, because it looks awesome. Okay, next up and last, we have the um, M220 Boletus by Tyrium. I actually think I have some lore for this. Um, so they've got an excerpt from the Mysterious of the Shakishi, the Hidden People. During the brief war for resources, the Shakishi fielded many ships, although some of the most unusual designs were traced back to the Eastern Mushroom Traders, the Agricius. Though their regular trade, through the regular trade, they had required the resources to build several cruiser class vessels with both armor and equipment to back those hull designations. Although these vessels were still designed with their typical fungal eccentricities, the high efficiency of their cruiser and escort vessels allowed a wider operational range, facilitating attacks from unexpected angles during the war. Following the conclusion of hostilities, many of these vessels returned to their homeland. Although with their efficacy having been displayed, some of the ships were sold off, revealing a new avenue of trade for the Agricus. I don't think the AI will overestimate the age crash test, but that is something we need to test. It wasn't so much of a big issue um, with garrison ships, but it may be a problem with... It shouldn't be a problem with the strike group ships because it does have the file for the strike group ship, but that is something we need to check. I think it will just travel at the range of the ship with the lowest range because uh, it will work that out when the ships are damaged. But let's check out the uh, Boletus. We may have to have a rediscussion on under range ships for strike groups. Oh, wow. This is cool. I love I love the ships. I, for some reason, I really like ships that, that don't have a standard shape, if that makes sense. Um, we've got Palash on this ship, just two Palash, two Palash covering the top, trying to protect the radar by the looks of it, and this Eland will be protected as well. Obviously, it's a full upper covering, but still. We've got two AK-100s, four AK-100s, I can see, with, with good coverage. Um, four 2A-37s. Doesn't look like we've got any missiles or anything. Um, it's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool ship. I like it a lot. The mushroom cat looks like a cartoon submarine. Yeah, it does. It does. There's there's the um, the, the conning tower. I, I see what you see, many-headed mishaps, and I, I actually really like it. Um, that's cool. Uh, that, that's a cool ship. Thank you so much for that. Um, thank you, everybody, for submitting your Borays. So that is all the Borays gone through. Um, there's some really good designs in here. There's some very interesting variation in firepower. Um... Under weapons, many defense, clipping with the hundreds. Okay. This is an adorable ship. Yeah, I like it too, um, Linserp. It's really nice. It looks like we're in range and we're very much in budget. It's very under budget, which is nice to see. And it looks like it could take quite a beating. So that's a, that's a really, really good, um, a good submission. All right. What we're going to do now is I'm going to jump out of High Fleet. Oh, you can see my desktop. I was, wasn't expecting you to. Well, check out my desktop while I sort out the ships. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on from the Bores, and we're going to look at the Cormorants. No, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for submitting ships. This has really made my month. I, I'm having so much fun going through these. All right, the Cormorants are ready to go. Let me just launch High Fleet and get my lore folder open. Oh, I've, I've, I've got a few. It's Actually, this one always comes up when I'm streaming, but I actually have a bunch that it cycles through. Um, it is nice. Uh, you should be seeing me all tabbing, but whatever. Let's get High Fleet loaded. I didn't realize you could... No, you, you should be seeing my alt tabbing. It should be using a game... Oh, I know what the problem is. Hang on. I can turn it off capturing my uh, alt tabs. Where's the Streamlabs? Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's just turn off this. And now you'll just see the game and you won't see me alt tabbing. I didn't realize you could see me alt tabbing. You should have told me. I'm such a professional streamer. Okay, we're on to Cormorants. Let me just get my lore folder open. Phase two, lore. All right. 
I'm excited for this. These should be cool. The Cormoran is a ship that has potential. Oh, it, it, it's using uh, wallpaper... Uh, what's it called? It's an app. It's, um, it's a Steam program. I use uh, Wallpaper Engine to get the animated... Um, Thank you, uh, TRM, for, for, for having that ready. Okay, we've got a few Cormorans to go through. Again, if I get any of the names wrong, I apologize. I will get them fixed. Uh, let's just look at the default Cormoran because it's actually unlocked by default. So the default Cormoran is the um, strike group fleet ship that has two Mark 180 um, Sarmats. The budget is 5% over 60,720, which I can't do that math off the top of my head. If someone could confirm it, that would be great. 6720, but you've got 5% on top of that. So 636756. Uh, yes, the Brawly one. Four, uh, four A37s, we've got missiles, we've got sprints, we've got FCR. It's a good package, actually. It's not a bad ship at all. It tends to die. It tends to, actually, no, it tends to hang on a little bit because the bridge is dug in a little bit, unless you can set fire to this. Um, and there is even an armor panel above the fuel tank here. All right. Yeah, if you take the thrusters out, they do just plummet out of the sky. I'm going to try and do all the cruisers of that. Don't worry. That's my plan for this. So first of all, we have the Horsen from Sir Elsay. I don't think I have lore for this. No, I don't. Let's check out the, the Hossa, Horvan. Very similar profile. Very similar armament by the looks of it. We've still got the 180 Sarmats. We've got one, two 37 millimeter cannons. We've got the addition of two Zeniths. Still got four um, sprints. We've got the addition of two KH-15s. Oh, the dual cruiser. <laughs> I thought you were just ordering me to do the cruisers. Um, two pallets on top of the ship. I can see them tucked in there. Yeah. Are they blocked or are they fine? They look... I, I know pallets work fine even if they're slightly blocked on there. So that's got the protection protecting this top section of the ship, which isn't as armored as the rest, but the rest is pretty well armored. You've still got the same coverage on the Mark 180 Sarmat. It looks like you've taken the Cormoran. I mean, like, how can I make this ship better? It looks like a really well-rounded design. So then budget. It's got the, the range um, requirements... It's, it's a, yeah, that, thank you, Tacos. That's a great way of putting it. It is a great generalist. Um, we'll, we'll check out the Negev in a minute and we'll do the comparison between the, the Comoran as well, see which is the, the better dual ship. The two Zeniths are actually a nice addition because what I think is going to happen in a lot of the fights that we're going to get into in this campaign is there's going to be missile swarms coming at me because every ship has managed to fit some Zeniths onto it. So just having those two Zeniths in there probably just goes a lot further than you think it might because that's another another couple of missiles during the fight that will show up. And yeah, I think putting sprints on stuff is just a good shout right now because Zeniths are good and I will use them when I can. All right, next up we've got the AGS Canny. If we remember, these are the heretical ships from the Far East. There's there's, there's no apologies with the AG system ships. It did have uh, Sprints Ready are right. So um, I don't have lore for it. I only have lore for the Reju, the Aiea, and the Hoto Dogu. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll, we'll check the AGS Canny. It's a crap. I was gonna make a crab joke, but my brain is 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 broken. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It has tracking six. So it can fire six sprints at once, of which it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It has fourteen sprints. It's carrying four KH-15 missiles. It has no armor to speak of, and it has four AK-100s with full coverage. <laughs> the AG system ships, um, they are just something else. They're from another planet. Look at this, look at this engine positioning here. The music got very um, sinister as well. Unlike a crab, it doesn't have an exoskeleton. Yes, it is a naked crab. Um, I... <laughs> yeah, strategic purpose ship. This is going to protect your fleet. It's going to shoot down any incoming cruise missiles. It's got the full range radar. It's got the full range ELAN system. It's got tons of tracking radar. I'm just still trying to process what I'm looking at. It is also asymmetrical. I've noticed that the, the arm and leg configurations here are different on both sides. So it lures you in with thinking that it's asymmetrical, and then it's different here as well. The spacing isn't right. It, it, it's just made to break your brain. 
It's definitely not fitting in a knocking bay, but it's getting a very big repair bonus. That was the canny from AG Systems. Next up, we have the troop from Corazon Ray. Let me get the lore for that. Wow. It is monstrous indeed. The King in Orange. Yes. We're getting into... We are getting into... Um, into Lovecraftian territory with these. It's meant to break in fights. Yeah, just snap into. It's going to go boom in a fight. It's going to explode. Okay, so we've got the, the troop. All right. The troop references the neighborhood class. Um, where the neighborhood class stays local, the troop class refers to Wander. Trading in half of its sprints and its heavier guns, the troop class clears over twice the distance without refueling. With our dependable elent and a Bichon for camping on the rolling hills, the incoming bandits will never stand a chance. My game is going to be memed hard, especially if you look at what has won the round, what is into the second round of courageous voting, which is not started yet. Don't worry, you haven't missed it. So let's check out the troop. Oh, it's got very big feet. Um, we've got four D80 Molots, which is not to be laughed at. We've got four, 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 six Zeniths. We have six Sprints. I really like this design of tucked in Eland. Not sorry, tucked in FCI. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. Tucked in um, FCI, the ship quacks. It does look a bit tuckish, doesn't it? One central RD-59 means it's not going to be particularly maneuverable on the battlefield, but it has full Eland and it has Guidance too, so it can launch two Sprints at once. Um, it's going to keep you going for a while. It's going to take a bit of a beating. It doesn't have to worry about any elevation issues, I don't think. No, elevation is fine. So all of these guns can shoot in every direction. So it's going to shoot stuff down. It's going to do a lot of damage. It may be a little bit low gunned for um, the, the class of ship, but it makes up for that in its subsystems being quite well protected. And I think it would last a pretty decent amount of time. If it's got a weakness, it's weak to the bottom. But it's a cool ship. Um, that is the troop by Corazon Ray. Next up, we have the um, Braveheart Indus Pretty Art Productions Ultra Courageous A, which I'm looking forward to see because I love the I love these courageous uh, line of ships. I'm just smiling looking at it. This is great. We've got Palash. I love to see Palash on these ships. We've got four sprints, four sprints. We've got two Zeniths. We've got Guidance One on the FCR. We've got Elant as well. Um, where is the primary armament? Wow. Okay, we've, we've got we've got the two Mark One One Eighty Eight Sarmats as well, and two Vimples. So it's it's a, it's a top fighter, which you kind of kind of expect from the build. Um, it's got flares as well, which is nice to see. Four Zeniths? Did I miss some? Oh yeah, four Zeniths. Yeah. Did I say two? Um, I I really like the aesthetic crash test. It looks really cool. I like the 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 um the two D thirty S's or the two NK forty five have updated themselves into RD fifty nines, which is really nice to see. Um. It just looks great. This is this is definitely a generalist, but it still has a lot of firepower. Um, is there a reason it's so under budget, or did you just like the design and wanted to stick with where it was? Because if we were doing this from a procurement perspective, and I was like, right, gathering. Sorry, I didn't mean to bang the table. I hope that didn't come through too loud. Gathering, you have this much money to put together your fleet. That would make a ship like this really attractive because not only is it cheap, but it's it's got everything it needs already. Um, it could do a lot of work in your fleet for, for for a low price. So it's pretty cool as the first of the Ultra Series to be designed. So it's your base plate for the rest of them. you got your ammo really well protected here as well. That, that's really cool. That's the uh, Ultra Courageous A. Next up, we have the Citadel from Cygna, which I, Cygnus, which I do. Yeah, the Courageous are cheap Corvette, so you wanted to design a Braveheart does make ships on the cheaper side. All of your ships have, have done a lot for the, the fact that you've come in under budget, which is really cool to see. Um... So the uh, Citadel does not... Okay, so the Citadel is from Cygnus, Cygnus Shipyards, uh, responding to a bid for dealing with a potentially large hostile vessel and the excess use of jet drop 250kg bombs known as the Sadie Special. The Citadel boasts its own sensor suite and dual Sarmat cannons for punching through armor. That's all we've got on that. Let's check this out. I like a Courageous 2. It doesn't have... It, it does have 180, but it doesn't have a 6 barreled 180. Oh, interesting ship. Long and fat. We've got two two kilo zeniths tucked in here. We've got the FCR and the Elant. Four sprints in an armored this armored bridge, which I quite like. We have two 180 Sarmats with fantastic coverage, considering there's a large field tank here. Protected with two A37 millimeter cannons. 156 kilometers per hour. Uh, we're in range requirements. We're in price requirements. Um, just a very interesting layout. Um, pretty well protected. There's no fuel tanks or anything under the armor that you need to worry about. Excessive fire on the bottom may detonate the ammo here, but 
it, all in all, it, if you're attacking it from the bottom, you're being hit by four 180mm cannons. So that is your downside. Cute is a good way to put it. It's very squat. Um, yeah, you can just build a wall with these. This would be a great defense ship. Um, that was just wondering that lost cause. I think it's on budget edge. Looking at it from the guns, because the guns themselves are six thousand each, and it has the extra sprints. So it has uh, four sprints in here, which are only three hundred each. Um, these sprints are like they're going to hit their own radar towers. They may do that. Um, it's under budget by a thousand. It's a cool ship. Very different in the design philosophy from a lot of, a lot of those ships we've seen. I like it a lot. All right, next up we've got the Magnum from Ensign Foil. Um, so, the Magnum is not one of the um, shipwreck rebuilt ships. Just to put that expectation on everyone anyway. But, there is a bit of lore for it. Where's the bridge here? The bridge is a little bit concerning, but it looks like it, and it is made to be a bottom top fighter as well, so that is a concern. The Magnum, so these ships are usually sitting, uh, the next ships didn't have, uh, get past the development stage. Only a few prototypes have been built for these unique ships. The Magnum is an effort to make a strike class fit in a smaller dock. It has a curious silhouette housing redacted guns. Yes, I made it for the laughs and also because I ran out of ideas. Crash test, if we can get one made, then we'll give you the under budget stamp. I think that's only fair. Um, as, as long as we get one sorted out. It, it's Lin. Lin Surf is making them. Um, if, if they're happy to do it, then I'm, I'm happy to get it put in there. Um, but you'll have to ask them nicely. So it, it's on them. But I, I think that's a really good idea. Here's the Magnum. It has a lot of guns. I know that already. You ready? It's um, a very tall ship. <laughs> It has eight AK-100s with uh, pretty nice coverage because they're tucked in, um, which is which is pretty cool. It is a strong shape. I wonder if it's not too top heavy to fall over. It's a concerning design for sure. I would like to see this landing. <laughs> um, it is a floof, uh, floof uh, demonetized. Yeah, it's gonna be. Can it safely land? I think it can safely land. Let's uh, let's test this. Oh, it looks even. Look at it deploying the legs, that's just obscene. I got. I just got the name as well, the Magnum. I think everyone wants to see the Magnum land, right? Yep, that's a safe, a safe landing. Perfect landing. That's textbook. <laughs> like a glove. <laughs> um, are these elants un? Yeah, these elants are unpowered. They're just here to be suggestive. I think. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, eight AK one hundreds. That is actually a lot of firepower. Let's not ignore the fact that this actually has a lot of guns. Um, I do need to work on my technique, but I'll push you. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it would land. I think I came down a bit too fast. Okay. Ensign Foil, I love your ships. I love your work. Um, next up, we have the... Oh, it's a Golden Floop ship. We have the HR, HLRMA 82 Grand Organ. Um, Floof has provided me some, some uh, lore for this. Uh, oh, I have a Floof.txt folder document with nothing inside it. Um, if you did provide me lore, Floof, I apologize for not copying it over. Um, I'll need to look it out for you. But let's, let's load this up and see what we've got. You guys are just trolling me at this point. <laughs> uh, all I can see are warheads sticking out the side of it. Can you see the warheads? We have one, two, three, four, five. Five KH-15Ps. One, two, three, four, five R3 missiles. No, 10 R3 missiles and five A100s. More than that, one, two, three, four, Five, five A100s. This is, this is terrifying. Um, does it have any guns at all? It has two Zeniths and a 37 millimeter cannon. 
Um, it has four sprints, it has tracking for one. It also has IRS, T and radar. Um, lots of fuel, it hits the range requirement easily and it's way under budget, the baguette class, I like that. Uh, we've got two, two phallic class ships. Uh, top speed of 180 km per hour isn't anything to laugh at. Um, I mean, it does what it says on the tin, right? It is a missile carrier and it carries a lot. The AI does use KH-15Ps, yes. If you turn your radar on, they will come for you. Um, thank you, Flu, for putting this into the voting pool. <laughs> um, that is there. All right, next up we have the um, Warm Moran from Kipco. I have some, I'll get your flavor open for this. Um, so this is the uh, Cormoran. Um, so these are design notes rather than lore. Um, I maintain the same sensor load of the original Cormoran, opting to capture the spirit as best as I was able. All of the stock weapons were re removed and replaced with Redacted for an extremely satisfying DACA. The four missiles were expanded to six of the more secure layer of armor on top of reinforced structure. Non volatile components were moved to the outer perimeter, and volatile components were moved to the center of the ship and placed behind at least one, if not two, layers of protection. The weaknesses of the engines were intentionally left, and the weapons were moved towards the bottom of the central fuel tank to allow it a broader attack, uh, arc of attack when at higher elevations. Slower than my liking, but more than adequate for the same cost, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Comoran, so I have a personal flagship built in its owner with nearly double the cost that could shred strike groups in its rapid succession. I dubbed this one the Warmeron L for light. Great name, actually, with the Warmeron. <laughs> People are loving this ship. Wow. That is a lot of, so we've got six uh, Zeniths. We've got eight sprints with Guidance 1. Where are the guns? We've got two 180 Sarmats here. I won't expect there to be two more. I'm not missing anything. Those are just the two, two, yeah, okay. There are two 180 um, Sarmats with double layer armor on the sides, very tanky. We also got um, Zeniths mounted on top of armor here. 70 kilometers on the range is very sad. Uh, maybe when I offer 5% on range, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I've, I've already said that we're just going to give it an under range stamp, unfortunately. But it is a good, this ship will last forever in combat. As they mentioned, everything volatile is in the middle. Um, yeah, you could, you could put a fuel tank, yeah, hang on. What's the range like now? 2672, is 2672 in range? Yeah, that's in range now. That'll do it. So we just, it just needs that extra fuel tank in there and it's in range. And it's still within budget, right? 63756, yes. Yes, it is now in range. I don't provide you with that additional fuel tank. It just popped in there. I hope you don't mind this um, destroying your design, Kipco, by adding a fuel tank to it. But that fixes the problem. If you do blow off one of the guns, you can't fire to that side. That's right. Cool ship, though. That's a lot of missiles and a lot of defense. It'll, it'll last a long time. Saved it. Okay. Next up, we... Oh, I saved it. it, it the game cut the save. That's fine. Next up, we have many hidden mishaps. Now, that definitely looks like it's had its name cut off, the fall. Um, so, we'll have to make sure that gets fixed. Um, yeah, this should be the Falcata. So, F-A-L-C-A-T-A. -A -A. I'll get that fixed. Um, built as a hybrid combat support ship to lead gathering hunter-killer squadrons, the Falcata is a theoretically powerful ship combining a flight of supersonic redacted, a full suite of active and passive sensors, heavy anti-ship artillery and interceptor missiles on an armored and reasonably fast hull. Technically, the ship fills all of these roles, and its on-paper capabilities inspired the initial construction of several ships. As, an, as is all too common with such ambitious concepts, the Falcata suffers from a number of drawbacks. The anemic armor scheme and poor cannon firing arcs render the ship a mediocre brawler at best, and extremely vulnerable to light interceptors that can evade fire and destroy the wholly exposed top side of the ship. The awkward superstructure interferes with most of the sensors, the two and two fighters is not a top line carrier make i really appreciate that not only have you made the ship but you've actually included flaws in it and commented on the flaws this is the full carter i did have law for an essential support flagship trying to do everything but wind up with any armor and profile arcs. yeah don't worry i've got your law and i've got the right name i will fix it for the vote this is the fuck ah but the thing is it just looks so cool and it fits that whole um it fits the the, the, the the design theme of your other ship so nicely. And wow, it looks like it was a, a hassle to make, but it looks great. What's flashing down here? Oh, there's escape pods. Do you know there's escape pods mounted underneath this this uh, this FCR? Um, we've got two sprints. 
we've got one D80 Molot here and one D80 Molot here and another D80 Molot here. So three D80 Molot, two T7 multipurpose fighters, another um, FCR, an IST Mars here, one, one forward firing Zenith, which I love, um, a big beefy leg here. I totally see what you're trying to build here. It looks great. Massively below range. Oof, yeah, it is very below range. Um, I do love the look of the flight deck. I like this like stru support structure here. It looks like something out of Ace Combat. Um, here comes the Falcata. Trigger, are you ready? That's very sad about the range requirement. I think it's because it's using small engines, basically, and it doesn't have any big fuel tanks. Um, it's still a cool ship. It, it is very weak to fire from above, unfortunately. It will go down very quickly. Um... And yeah, we can't fix the fuel requirements of slapping a few fuel tanks on, unfortunately. Still a cool ship. I'm really happy you submitted it. It looks awesome. All right, next up we've got the Vox from Sifrim. It's all right, many handed mishaps. The, your, your ships have enough style that it makes up for it. You could totally add some Ace Combat music to High Fleet. I know someone has modded it to include the Deserts of Karak chatter. During the Varg to Zero would be amazing. All right, next up we've got a Comron. Sifrim? What am I missing here with the Vox? What happened? Oh, are you serious? It glitched out on you. That is such a shame. Oh. Oh, I'm really sad. Do you think you could... Do, do you still have it? Do you think you could get it to me? Because I can at least put it into the vote. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you to resubmit it if you still got it. Because you made it, if you if you build something, you made it in time. <laughs> we have Comron as Comron. Okay, it, look, see if you've got it and let me know in the Discord if you do. And I'll, I'll, I'll do the better. <laughs> it's different, plagiarism is bad. Uh, yeah, the original being the best alternative, that's the theme. All right, we'll move on for now, but look out, look out for it for me if you've got it, Sifrin, because I would really like to get it in the vote. Next up, we've got the Strawman. We've got the Jin from Strawman, or the Genie. So, we've, have we already seen this ship? I feel like we've already seen this ship. What is? No, I think we've. I think your other, the other ship from Strawman looks very similar to this. That's right, um, because this one has two DNA molots down here. Uh, it has a two A thirty seven up here and another DNA molot. So it's got four DNA molots. It's got all around DNA molot coverage. Two two A thirty sevens. We've got four sprints. Well, no, we don't. We don't. We've got six sprints. We've got six zeniths. Um, no active defenses. One guidance from the FCR. Yeah, I quite like the dual tanks too. We've got a super hat for the, um, the, uh, what should we call it? The bridge is, is built in here. We've got a range of 2706, which is really nice. It's it's under budget as well. It does have Palash. There's the Palash there. I just, I just saw it and then I lost it. There. Nope. Come on. There. I can't get my mouse to stay on it. Okay. We have two Palash covering the top. Um, yeah. Covering both sides. It has full cover. I really like the armored citadel bridges as well, tacos. Um, they look eight. They look tacos. They look. They look really cool. I love the way the armor actually fits together really nicely as well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the Variax. Uh, that's a cool ship. It's got lots of options available to it. It looks really cool. All right, next up we've got the next House Lefay ship. I'm sad. I'm sad that the Tarkin Lefay themselves isn't here right now. Um, I would love to get their comments on their ships, but uh, we're just gonna have to read the law for it and see what they have to say for themselves. So we're the Reliant. <clears throat> uh, no, I haven't taken any Sevestival submissions actually Lost Cause because I want to build my own cruiser. Although House Lefay, um, Tarkin Lefay was talking about wanting... No, who was it? Someone, was, someone on the Discord was saying, can we design ships for, for us to, to give them a chance? Um, anyway, the Reliant. House Lefay's Reliant class light cruisers are an upgrade over the venerable Comoran light class, class light cruisers, commonly found in the Romani Empire Order Battle. Where the Comoran's main armaments are a pair of twin-barreled 180mm guns, the Reliant, instead, if you excuse the pun, relies on a withering battery of 130-100mm cannons on each side of the ship. Geared towards fighting off smaller vessels so common on the border territories of House of Fey, these vessels are reasonably fast, with a comparable range to the Comoran. Their only downside is an absolute lack of sensors, attributed to their status as a second-line escort and garrison vessel. It is not expected for these vessels to operate alone in spite of the long range. It was, it was the Fey's suggestion. Cool. All right, let's check this thing out. I'm excited to see how many guns makes up a withering barrage of fire. Okay. It's cute. 
It's very cute. We've got six Zeniths. We've got two AK-100s and two DNA models on each side of the ship. Comparable firepower. I don't think we've got any... Uh, let's just check. I'll just check the quick way. We'll just mount a Palish on it somewhere. No, no Palish on the ship. Um, it's 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 actually got quite a lot of firepower. Um, they've taken the the, the, da the disadvantage of the fuel tank into account when they built the ship and just made sure that it always uses all of its firepower on both sides. Oh, you could spe set the specs for my design. Do you want me to actually have a chance in this campaign? Um, yeah, just fire it there, Sifrin, please. If you fire it now, I'll get it loaded into the game. We'll look at it right now on stream. I like it. It's very cute. It's very well designed. Top speed of 185 kilometers per hour. That's fast for Comoran. It's well within range. It's well within budget. Firepower 22 is nice to see. And, and you're right. Separate firing groups um, is very good for the AI, which is what I like about the mix of the AK-100s and the D-80 bullets here. Something that I might take into account for my own construction. Uh, one thing that looks really nice as well is putting the quarters here. Just make for this really nice, smooth... I'm trying not to put my mouse over it. On the left-hand side of the field, take that really nice, smooth armor um, or, or hull plating, which I think looks really cool. Nice ship. All right, next up, we've got the Uman from Grey Wars Adventurer, which I should have... Um, yeah, the unarmored middle would be very satisfying to cut through, especially when ships fly apart. Let's just check your... Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about this is this is this ship. This is a nifty little ship that packs a deceptively large punch. The concept was to stack so much AK-100 that it pretty much constantly send walls. Oh no, we already looked at that. This is the Cormoran build. I saw the Cormoran has some sprint and thought, why not go all in? The result of this thought was the Uman, a ship that packs two fire control radar and a lot of sprints. Designed to be a cheap, long range, and decently fast anti-aircraft and anti-missile platform. It packs a lot of sprints, as well as two 37mm for some light deterrents, although it would be much use against a real warship. Also mounted are Palash and Flares for even more survivability ability against airstrikes and missile attacks. So this is a Cormoran redesign into a defensive ship. Let's check this out. I'm just reading what you put there, Lost Cause. Oh, um, we've got some very interesting mounting of FCR here. It's actually got a guidance of three. Uh, we've got how many... I even want to count this. Three, six, nine. Oh, I lost it. Uh, okay, along the top. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two sprints. Absolute no-fly zone. Um, these are actually quite well protected underneath the ship, probably. Um, top speed of 263 kilometers per hour. That is a new record for sprints by far. I don't think anyone has even thought about that many sprints before. Um, actually, I want to test something out here because this is this is insanity. Uh, what is the sprint launch button again? I always forget off the top of my head. I just want to launch sprints to planes. Oh, I accidentally abandoned the ship. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, let's see some planes. Sprints are only good against missiles and planes, Steven, you're right. It's only let me fire launch two missiles at a time. That's a shame. I wanted to just fill I wanted to fill the air with missiles. Okay. I wanted I wanted to proper just fill the air with missiles. Press T for crew respects, that is what happened. Under budget by 10k, that's a good point. It's, it, it's a very nice support ship, but all it does is missiles. It does have two 37mm here, but unfortunately they can't cover the top, right, top very well. It's a cool idea. I love it. Um, so that was the Uman. Next up we have the Blasphemy from Silent Stack. Uh, the legs are slightly misaligned. Yes, you are right, um, Tacos. Let me tell you to get in the other 29 and that flies up. Um, what is the Blasphemy? Uh, I don't see... I don't see lore for the Blasphemy. No, that's because I'm looking in the wrong person. I don't have lore for the Blasphemy. I have lost lore for the Avalon. Oh, well, let's check the Blasphemy out. Just just taking it in. We have three, six, seven, eight sprints. Um, we have a full Palash coverage. We have two DAT Monots and three Vimples, all of which are elevated so that they have full coverage of fire. We just have a, have a, a small flight deck with two LA-29s on it. Um, we have Elint, which isn't blocked, and an FCR. Um, 
And another FCR down here as well that is slightly blocked, but it gives a tracking of two. Uh, you want to see it land. It looks very lopsided. Um, should we do a landing? A top speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Is that within range? Uh, price is uh, 63350 aerodynamics. I hardly knew her. Let's see if it lands then. Oh, the thrust is actually okay. It's... Definitely um, a little bit off center. It <laughs> looks like a shoe. It's very Boston Dynamics, actually. That is a good point. Look, a Tarkan just decided to add engines to their castle, is what happened here. There you go, it lands perfectly. Even got a repair speed bonus of 15%. It's all good. Imagine crewing an oversized brick. Look, you may, you may be saying nasty things about this brick, but it has decent armament and it's well protected. Armor all the way around, it has palash, internal thrusters for protection. It's pretty good. Uh, it may not be the most beautiful ship, but it 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 fits the requirements perfectly. There's no um, components. Well, I guess this fuel tank is maybe a little bit exposed, but it's it's not bad at all. Two fighters as well. It can do a lot of different jobs. Uh, it thrust we trust. As yeah, that's completely right. Okay, next up we have the Avalon from Tacos, which I have lore for. It reminds you of Texas, just the shape of it, like the state. Okay, the Avalon. One of the company's most popular designs, the Avalon presents a capable mix of combat power and strategic utility. Carrying an Elant and Radar Suite, the design still has surviving examples within the Romani Empire as well as within the Gathering, where its capabilities make it a popular choice as a leader of strike groups and patrols working in tandem with more dedicated strategic ships. Let's check it out. The Avalon. Ah, so we've got another example of using fuel tanks to stop any problems with elevation. What that has led to is a mind-boggling amount of fuel tanks. That is impressive that you sat and clicked all of those in there. Uh, we have four DD Molots and four Vimple, all of which with perfect coverage. You can shoot in every direction. Um, what happened here? I think that's just a bug, because you can just fix that very easily. Yeah, that's how it should look. Um, we've got uh, double FCR here and um, Elant. The FCR inclusion makes me think there should be Sprint. Way over range. Wow, way over range. Sip State is 15 fire. Um, it is way over range. It is under budget. Uh, and it has a pretty decent speed of 125 kilometers per hour. In combat, it's not going to be that maneuverable with the only one um, on fire 42. It's massively over range. But that's its job, right? It's supposed to be a, a, a flagship that can travel a long distance, at least in, in this lore here. Um, interesting elevation situation here with these two generators. A strike group armed tanker is exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> Meth Lord. It's pretty cool. Uh, do not underestimate the firepower on this. Four, four um, Molots and four Vimples will, will do damage to you over time. And it is pretty well protected. But like everyone in chat is pointing out, once you catch this fire, you're in big trouble. <laughs> if this thing catches you, you'll be able to see it from Kiva. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last for the Comrons, apart from the one I'm going to grab from Discord, is the M161 Chanterelle from T-Ram, which is another one of the Mycenium ships. Another mushroom ship. It does have some FSS. Yes, it does have some FSS. You're right. It actually has quite a lot of FSS, so that has been thought about. It has been thought about. It can't put out a lot of fires. Oh, a very wide boy. Um, two Sarmats, uh, two 37, four of the 37 millimeters. Um, yet. I got enemies don't use incendiary yet. Wait for that next patch. Uh, four sprints. We've got the FCR as well. Another solid design from TRM. I love, I like, I like these designs for the RD-59 engines. Um, Top speed of 132. We're hitting the range requirement. We hit the price requirement, of course. Um, it's looking really cool. Uh, 24 on the firepower scale. Excuse me, on. Do not get under this ship, whatever you do. You know, you're saying it's a defensive build, and I can see the steps you've taken to ensure that it is protected and defensive, but it's still very offensive. If you get below it, you're in trouble. The open-up field of fire from these two guns is uh, interesting. Oh yeah, ammo packed in the wings, you're right. Lots of ammo boxes here in the wings. But where else are you going to put them in this design? Because they are, these take up so much room. And you've got your generators internal so they don't get destroyed. 
Fair enough, Tacos. It does make it quite difficult when you try and pick up different roles, which is what you've had to do with the Avalon. I still like the Avalon a lot because I think that is um, actually a lot of firepower for what it has. And I think it could do a lot of damage. But I think everyone is right in the concern that it will catch fire really, really quickly. I still think it's a good submission and I, I quite like it. Um, mostly because I want to use Incendiary Law in this campaign, but no, I, I think it's cool. Uh, but this is another cool one. Thank you very much for that, Tacos. Okay, that's all the Comorons, but one that we're going to grab in a second. Let's just quit out of the game so I can get the next lot loaded. And we'll add that Comoron in. Now, sadly, you can't see my cool desktop again. Let's grab... Let me just jump into Discord and grab that ship if you manage to get it uploaded. Oh, um, Lilith, you've already got those under budget things set up. That's so cool. Um, right, I've got the Comoron. I'll just add it to my ship folder. That's the Vox added. And I'll copy that over now. So it's in for the next lot of ships. Let's get rid of all of these. Fleet. These two Comoron, Cifran, Vox. So I'll copy that over. And the next ships we're gonna do, so we've done the Bores, we've done the Comorons. We've still got the Negev, the Nimrods, and the Archangels. What do we want to do next? Do we want to do the Negevs next and leave the Archangels for after that? Or do we just go straight into the Archangels now? Because I think the Archangels are the star of the show here. So I would like to get the Negevs out of the way. There aren't that many Negevs. There's only, what, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's only 14 Negevs. Let's do the Negevs. Let's get them out of the way and we'll do, we'll do Archangels next. I'm going to do, I'm staying up. I'm, I'm well rested. We're going to get through all of these in this stream. I'm not going to back out. So let's get ships in here. We've already got the Comoron in there. We're going to look at the Comoron first. Let's get High Fleet relaunched. And let me get my lore folder back open. Need that lore. Oh, so Neil shared me a playlist of stream friendly um, audio that I need to check out. All right, lore is open. Let's get into the game, which should be launching now. Okay, are we ready to look at some ships? Let's check out the Cifrin's Comron first. This is the Vox from Cifrin. Okay, it, look, it worked this time. I'm really happy that we managed to get that sorted before uh, the stream was over. So what have we got here? We've got one, two D80 mullets that I can see. Uh, are there more tucked in here? No, we've got two 37 Vimples. Um, where is all the money gone? What am I missing? Ah, there's another two DD mullets down here as well. So you've got really good coverage with those DD mullets around the ship. Four mullets is nice. Um, I didn't see the other two. We've got two, we've got four zeniths as well. All the escape pods, very well armored. You've got spaced armor here as well. So this armor is, this this hull is just here to be ablative. Everything's protected. It looks like a very, yeah, tacos, you got it perfectly. Very well armored from every direction. I'm really happy you put that in, Cifrin. That's a cool ship. We are range and price fine by the looks of it. A top speed of 139 kilometers per hour. Should be decently maneuverable with the two internal thrusters. It's looking really nice. Um, thank you very much for getting that in. I'm really glad we got to check it out. All right, let's move on to the Negevs. Now, as always, AGS Systems get their shipping first because of the name of their design bureau. Has anyone noticed the name of this ship yet? It is called the Hotto Doggo. Now, um, this ship apparently comes with its own theme song. I'm a bit scared to play this on stream, but I haven't listened to it yet. Um, the only information I've been given is Hotto Doggo protects itself with a wall of fire, only becoming faster as it takes more damage. It is copyrighted Pedal Pusher. Um, I, I'm terrified of getting a strike because if I get a strike, I can't stream anymore. The second you get a strike on YouTube, they take away your ability to stream. Uh, so I'm not going to play the video, but I will watch it off stream and I will link it in... Yeah, I'll link it in chat. Let's do that. Give me one second. I have to change what I'm... I have to... It's a bit silly how I get into chat. Give me one sec. What to... I don't use the YouTube um, streaming control room. That is the theme song. If it's not safe for work, I apologize. So I can't check this out. I will listen to it after the stream. 
but let's check out the Hotodoku. I'm excited. I'm actually really excited. I love these ships. <laughs> you mean a literal wall of fire? I'm waiting for people's reactions to the ship. 48 Molots. Uh, Mark 700 radar, because of course. Test flight. It doesn't have any fuel inside. Yes, there is fuel inside. There are two fuel tanks inside. We're going to test it. It's going to... Let's see how we go. Give the... I can't give the enemy incendiary ammo, unfortunately. See how it does against the Varyag. I have no way to shoot down those uh, incoming missiles. I got one of them. She's still alive. Keep an eye on the, uh, the profile in the lower corner. We're going to switch to using our, our top fuel tank. Lost the, we lost the side fuel tank now. It's taking a lot of damage, actually. I'm trying to get past this Bore. I'm out of FCS. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. That's such a funny design. Yeah, it's actually crazy how much damage these fuel tanks could take. New meta. Um, that was pretty cool. All right, that was the Hodo Doggo from AGS Systems. So there's not that many negatives to go through. Next, we have the billboard from Corazon Ray, which we do have lore for. Let me get that up. Wait, there's a radar? Yeah, there's this Mark 700 radar underneath it as well. Uh, Getting sun, you got to get used to that, getting sun on fire over and over and over again. Okay, so this is the billboard. Okay, this is another quote. So let me get this straight. You can see this thing on radar returns before Elint does? Uh, technically possible, yes. Why would your design allow such a glaring floor? It goes 3,400 kilometers at 225 kilometers per hour and carries redacted. Where do I sign? Are you ready? for this ship, because I know what its armament is now. I had Corazon Ray. If you are in chat, you are a madman. Or mad woman, or mad them. Do you want to know how many AK-100s that is? That is 14 AK-100s. 14. One four. Obviously, they don't have great, um, they don't have great, uh, great coverage, uh, but if you get on top of this ship, you are just getting destroyed. That is obscene. The game rates this as 28 firepower. I think it's like 280 firepower. Um, could it, yes, it could feasibly invert itself to fire downward. It could. I'll, I will test that now. If I hold down Q, well, it's trying. I'm, I'm, I can't actually get it to invert. I can't get it to turn over. Let's try this way. No, it will. It won't turn over for me. Hello, slugger. It can shoot through the fuel tanks a little bit, actually. Let's, let's fire one more barrage at this, uh... <laughs> yeah, if it was vector only, it could turn over. It's that bottom one that's causing the problem. It's, it's these engines here that are causing the problem. That's still insane. 14 AK-100s. We're getting to some cursed ships here. All right, next up we have the Ultra Courageous S from Braveheart Productions. Can't wait to see this. Two IRST, so we have full IRST coverage. We've got a Mark 700 radar, two MP404 Elint. This is the full package, full sensor. Yeah, the sensor variant. I can see 
Still got your same, like, it's still got a great armament. Two deity Molots, four Vimbles. It can, it can fight for itself. Four um, Zeniths as well. So it's got that missile coverage. This is your support ship. This is the, uh, the Eye of Sauron. Is a, I was going to say this is the Eye of the support group that I looked over and Derp had said this is the Eye of Servant Sauron. This is exactly what it is. One thing I like about these designs, someone mentioned it earlier, but it's really fallen to me now is they look really industrial. Um, it looks like it's a military vessel that's not got, you know, it's not built for aesthetics. It is aesthetically nice, but it's like, it, this does a job and it does a job well. Um, it is surprisingly tough looking at it. Um, now that we know how tanky fuel tanks are, um, it has SS as well. Uh, only two, but still they're in good position. They'll be protected. Um, I like these little underslung escape pods here as well. Um, what were the range and the price requirements? I think I missed them when I was alt tabbing earlier. Do we have them written down? <gasps> Excuse me, I've got the hiccups again. No, I don't see it. Um, 3000 is a lot of range. Uh, yeah, 3241 is amazing. That's right, this ship has a bug range. In, it looks like it's in budget as well. Nice work crash test. I think you're over, over range actually, massively over range. Um, I'll see if we can get someone to confirm that for me if they could. Um, that's really cool. Okay, next up we've got the QPR from Forrest Kaminsky. Um, I do not have lore for that, so let's load that up. Speed, what was the speed on it? I didn't catch the speed. On the Ultra Courageous S. 168 kilometers per hour, yeah, that is fast. Or shit like this, yeah, nice. All right. 3146, thank you, Lin. Uh, Lin Seth, thank you very much. 3146 range. 6492 a budget, according to my copy of Five Foot. Cool. It's got a little bit more than that because we've got 5% on that. Ooh, curious shit. We've got a uh, little little internal launcher bay is the first thing I notice, which is cool. Um, we've got a D mullet up here and then a D mullet down here, which is interesting. Um, we've got two A37s. We've got four Zeniths. So it's kind of a multi role carrier fire control radar ship with four sprints. Um, does it have, did I notice? Yes, there is Palash built into the frame as well. It's got three Palash. Um, 68166, thank you. Thank you so much. Little Bridge and Ammo, but I love the flight deck. I actually really like this flight deck. How did it land? Um, I think they just build a new ship, honestly, Derp. Like, <laughs> just to throw the fighter away. It's never getting back in. Like a helicopter frigate. That's a cool, yeah, yeah. Oh, imagine if the helicopters in this game. That'd be cool as well. Um, I wonder what you could use them for. It's got Palash as well. Don't forget it's got Palash. Um, it's got... It's got um, a full coverage of Palash, actually, because it's got uh, one facing left, one facing right, and it's got an extra layer on top as well. Um, this one has an A100 as well. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice it because it isn't a thing, but there is an A100 in here, too. So there's a little bit of everything. This is kind of like the strategic weapon version of the Courageous S, and that it has every kind of strategic weapon you could think of. Um, but, yeah, light aircraft carrying cruiser. That's cool. Cool ship. Um, got the range. Good speed as well, 140. It's actually got decent firepower. Um, and it's within budget, six, eight. Yes, it is within budget as well. Nice. Okay. That was the QPR from Forrest Kaminsky. Next up, we've got the Unagi from Daina. Um, if everyone knows Unagi is eel in Japanese. It's like the only Japanese word I know. So the Unagi, um, in recognition of the need to maintain military presence throughout the gatherings through Republic, both in its Kievan heart and on this fringes, the Lord Governor has commissioned the United Tactical Cruisers. The first of this new breed of cruiser ready for field tests is the Unagi. If you're getting tips and intel from an entire region, she has the range and speed to investigate it all. All the necessary intelligence personnel to collate it neatly and feed it straight back to you. So it's an intelligence gathering ship. Tactical ships are crazy to build for sure. All right, what have we got here? Ooh, this looks similar to another ship that you've built previously, I believe, just a bigger version of it. So we've got, um, this is a, an IRST. This is an FCR. We've got another two FCRs here. Guidance of two, because this is another IST. I see you, you've, you've asymmetrical the uh, sensors. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've got four T7s built in. We've got two, a, two KH-15s in the hull here. We've got Palash coverage for the whole ship. We've got eight, six sprints. Um, top speed of 262 kilometers per hour is actually very, very quick. I will go back and do that in a second, Lynn. Thank you for reminding me. Um, range 3171, price 66310. Um, so it is just over range which is fine and it's under budget is no it's over budget no no it's fine it's fine the budget is fine because the budget is 68166 interesting ship so they've taken this as the support carrier kind of for the striker but a lot of people looking at the negev in a different way probably because it's got that ridiculous range they're trying to find another way to get it because the negev let's face it the negev has a stupid range and it 
is Fluff compliant because it's 68. I believe that is Fluff compliant. Okay, let's quickly check the Hotto Doggo. Hotto Doggo is uh, range and price compliant. The billboard with its 14 AK100s is range and price compliant. And the Ultra Courageous S is, I'm certain, it is range. Range is. 3 1. Yeah, range and budget compliant as well. Easily. It's under budget again. Nice work. All right. Next up, everybody, are you ready? We have the Ark of Garat from Ensign Foil. There is lore for this. Yeah, you're right. It's very Cold War feeling. Okay. The Ark of Garat is inspired from the largest of the shipwrecks. It has a very good range, but suffers in firepower. Only four redacted. Are we ready? <laughs> it's got sprints in the sails. It's got a an SCR that just exists because it can't. You know, if you moved it one over, it would actually... Oh, I thought it would have power, but it doesn't. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Where are the guns? Here they are. It's got uh, 180 cannons all around the fuel tanks. It's got sprints built into the sails. Elint radar. It has an FCR. So technically it has tracking one, but can it actually use that tracking one because the FCR isn't powered? I need to confirm that. We'll find out if the sprints will ignite the sails in a second because I want to test it. It's, it's actually massive. Just looking for enemy enemy planes in the air. The sprints launched fine. Well, that sprint launched fine. Although that was an interesting situation of tracking. Yeah, the sprints... Sprints are doing some interesting things. Yeah, no, the sprints, the sprints work fine. You can hear the sea shanties. Uh, now what we need are like boarding grappling hooks and marines to do boarding actions and the ship would be perfect. It's actually really well armored, which is hilarious. Um, I love it so much. Seven kilometer tracking radar range. Yeah, even though it's unpowered. That's so funny. Seven kilometers. <laughs> I wonder what that would look like on the strategic map. I love it. Thank you so much, Edson Foil. These are so good. Imagine walking the plank of this thing. It'll be a long fall, Crusader. A long fall. All right, that is the Ark of Garat. Um, next up we have... Oh, there's a resubmission of it. Damn, I keep missing your resubmits. I think this is a little bit more compliant or more pretend... Oh, you've, you've changed where the sprints are. Will these sprints work? How many are there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Sorry, I need to quickly check if the sprints work. Tarkan Pugwash. Need to wait for a plane to get in the air. I'm pressing launch. Yeah, no, the sprints still work. So the sprints work fine, even though they're not powered, as well as the FCR working, even though it's not powered. That's a bit cursed, to be honest. But yeah, cool shit. All right. Next up, we have the... Eight point, the ACT-80 2.5 Houndmas. It's Christmas. Oh, you, I remember reading about this. Um, I'm really sad I haven't got your lore because I remember you talking about this being um, part of a special um, a special celebration time of year among the, the, the floof people. Um, but since trees don't grow in the desert, they use an aluminium shaped object. Are we ready? <laughs> it's an aircraft carrier with an impressive... Um, don't, don't be underwhelmed. It's an impressive... A 10 um, planes. I love this very thin crew quarter section down the middle. We also have a sneaky kit downward firing. Is it downward? Yeah, downward firing KH-15P down here. Um, lots of fuel. So it's got a range of 8,494 kilometers and a speed of 172. It can add another 10 planes. That's right. Price is... A, is, the, is that over budget? No, it's not. It's just, just on... Orion Drive. There's the I love the little D30 engine in here. That's so funny. It's got six sprints, seven sprints as well, and a 37 millimeter cannon. So you know it's heavily armed. Um, that's a fun ship, Floof. <laughs> I, I love it. Nothing says Christmas spirit like multiple high-speed fighter craft about to missile you into the next life. 
Finally, an Axu Mobile Aircraft Tactical Group ship. Oh wait, this for strike groups? Even better. <laughs> All right, we've got the Negev one from Kipco, uh, which I have some lore for, I think. The Negev. The standard Negev fills a lot of roles without being particularly good at any of them. Almost every sensor available, but only four sprints by default. This compacts the design, relocates the sprints, in alternating fire patterns, so they are more likely to intercept incoming missiles. In addition, all of its weapon hard points are replaced with six C ways to further place it in an AA role. It keeps it heavy armory and extended range, and can now serve more as a dedicated AA that is able to brawl with almost every small to mid-sized corvette and interceptor, especially if the crew uses incendiary ammunition. There are also two downward-facing ship-to-ship -ship missiles on either side of the vessel. Also, a small flight deck for scout interceptor craft is placed on top next to the conning tower. This could potentially expand it on the future. Our components are arranged in such a way to allow long-range ballistic missiles to be fielded. Cool. It could have several planes. That, I, that makes sense, Golden Flu, if you wanted to fit it into the budget. Um, let's check out the Negev one. That is very compact. Wow, that's a small ship. We have 10, um, 10 Zeniths. We have tracking of one from one here. We've got Elon, we've got two planes, and we've got six 37 millimeter. A mini Varyag. Not quite a mini Varyag. Um, it doesn't have any big guns, but um, it's, it's cute. It makes up... No, it makes up for it in sprint. Um, I like this ship actually. I like it a lot. I like the flight deck. Um, I like the the bristling um, sprint launches uh, and the thirty seven millimeter. We've got three two four four for the range, speed of one hundred forty kilometers. It's just in budget. Um, it's very small. I, I really want to like stress how small the ship is. Um, it's very very compact. Uh, there is also two zeniths hiding in an armor gap here, which I love. It's very well designed. Um, it, it, it looks really cool. And we've got Palash as well. I just noticed the Palash. This also has Palash increasing, so I'm playing with the coin, which you're probably hearing on the stream. This makes it very, very well protected. It's a good ship. Don't underestimate this. Also, I forgot to point it out, but it also has a radar. We have some budget left over. Let's slap some missiles on. That's what you like to see. All right, next up we have, thanks to friend, we have the Morb. <laughs> I actually love it. Um, I have not seen Morbius, by the way. Uh, not quite Golden Club compliant, but you don't need those escape pods. Yeah, well, the escape pods get scraped off when it lands. That's a shame. Uh, and the Gev compliant Vox. Okay, uh, let's check it out. Oh, my. I hope you're not hearing my stomach growling. Oh, I actually really like the firepower on this. We've got four, uh, four DNA mullets, four 37 millimeters. Escape pods down here. It isn't quite as, um, uh, quite as, uh, as, as, as morbing as the other morbs I've seen submitted. Um, what's down three? Oh, it's, it's the it's the it's the leg components. Um, very nicely compact. You've you managed to shrink it down quite a lot. We're still getting a decent amount of firepower. Derp one two three takes the words out of my mouth. I didn't want to say it, but it is a bit of a tactical brick. Um, nicely maneuverable with the internal engines as well. I think this would keep fighting for quite a long time. It's a good ship. Thank you. Next up, we've got the Endured from Tech Guy. I think this is their first submission, and yes, it can land. It looks like oh, actually, yeah, you, the legs do maybe do look a little bit low, but if you say it can land, I believe you. Let's go and check out the Endurin from Tech Guy. Similar, actually, it's, it's going for the double Archangel fuel tank build. We've got the um, radar elint, three sprints, um, two at 37 millimeters, and molots as well. It looks like we've got four molots in a very similar configuration. We would take you two taking notes together. Um, it's got Zeniths as well, and it's got Palash too, so it's pretty well protected. Um, double armored cap on the top here. No, I've stolen it, Derp. It's my brain cell now. Um, it's, it's just another nice compact design. Um, we've got top speed of 136. We've got a range 3164. Price 64890. Um, I'm collecting them to create the ultimate morb. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it's it's another cool another cool Negeva design. I like the um, FCR just popped down here on the side. I actually really like stuff like this, even though it's not particularly um, effective to put it in places like that. I just like it in those kind of places. Um, this is a good ship. Thank you very much. All right, next up, we've got the um, Borev from Usinus. It does have Palash. It has two Palash, one on each side. Sifrin? Yeah, it does have a Palash. So it's got full Palash coverage, but only one layer. All right, next up, we've got the Borev from Ursinus. Um, ooh, interesting ship. This, this looks um, more Bore shaped, even though it's a Negev entry. Double layer of armor on the top. We've got six, eight Vimples. Um, that's eight. 75 millimeter. Uh, it doesn't. Look, that's kind of why it's called. That's why it's called the um, Borev, because it's in the game. It's got. Uh, t uh, 
my brain has just lost. It's got 14 sprints. I couldn't count for a second there. Top speed of 166 kilometers per hour. Range 3242. Prices on budget as well. That's not bad. That's actually, um, if you wanted a support ship that wasn't mounting the heavy guns, that you knew would be able to do a lot of damage over time, something that would sit in the back and just, just DPS away. You've got it here. It's also got guidance too, so it can actually launch two of these missiles at a time. Um, th this is this is another good another good example. Just just lots of firepower, good armor. Um, I don't think there's any palash on it. Oops, I didn't mean to zoom in so much. Let's just quickly check the palash situation. No, there's oh there is there's four palash. There's palash built into um, into these uh, these towers here to protect the sensors. I'm assuming so it has palash protection as well. Um, so watch out for that. That's got more armor than it looks like it has because it has Palash on it. I'm glad I checked for that. Uh, so there's a lot going on here. It's got the Elint too. Um, Anti-airstrike Palash is what I think it is. Can Palash destroy rockets? I've never actually never actually seen that. Like Because Palash isn't on the strike group ships usually. Um, I'm, it's just on the Comoron. But you don't really deal with them with landed. I'm not sure. Anyway, that is the Borev by Ursinus. That's a nice ship. Next up, we've got the Bowler from Taco, which I have. Tacos, which I have lore for. Works against rockets, but not bombs. Yeah, I think... And they have too much HP. Mm, that is a problem. All right, the Bowler. The Bowler. A dedicated strategic cruiser. The Bowler was designed to be a campaign in a can. I like... I really like that name. The campaign in a can. Carrying every strategic asset a commander might need. It is equipped with a small but powerful air wing, a cruise missile bay, a full elant, radar, tracking radar, and IRST suite. The Bowler is one of the few Atassa designs manufactured today. Today, if you could afford it, of course, its designs have been proliferated across all of Elat. Where can I buy a can and for how much? Well, let's check it out. This thing is, according to the, the spiel, this has everything. It is cute. We have one, two, three, four. We have three KH-15s and two A-100s. Um, we've got guidance of two. We've got five fighter bombers. Where is the sprints? We've got one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sprints. Um, lots of escape pods. Any palash in here? There's no armor at all, which is a little bit scary. So everybody palash your designs just do it to locate palash. No, there's no palash on the on the ship. What we have here is your sensor package, your attack, strategic missile package and your, your aircraft package protected. We do have armament, but there's two, two, 30, two A-37s. This is not made to be a frontline fighter. This is your support strategic um, strike group ship. It's gonna find me, and then it's gonna it's gonna be a tanker, yet yeah, with a range of 5286, um, and it's gonna bombard me with missiles and planes while the rest of the strike group hunt me down. It's an interesting take on the design role. All right, last but not least, we have the M271 Medusa from TRAM. Um, do I have lore for this one? I don't think I do. No, I've just got the general spiel. I'm sorry if I missed the lore for it. Um, plane might hit the Elant taking off. I don't think it... It, it might, yeah. Um, does the garrison utilize these strategic assets? Well, this isn't a garrison ship, Derp. This is a strike group ship, and it definitely will. Last up, we have the M271 Medusa. Ooh. Interesting. We've got six sprints. We've got... Four Vimple, two AK-100. Um, I like the Elint placement here. It almost looks like someone holding out the two orbs on their hands. Two morbs on their hands, maybe? Um, sorry, that's a terrible joke. We have two A-100s. Do we have any Zeniths hidden in here? No. Uh, do we have any active yet? We've got two Palash as well. So it's it's Palash protected. Or full Palash protection as well. Uh, pondering his morbs, exactly. <laughs> it's a cool ship as well. Like, this is this is all good. Um, this is the Courageous. Ooh, Strom, I like it. I like ships that have unstandard designs, and and this definitely fits that. Um, this armor choice down here is interesting. I wonder why you brought it in one step, but it, it'll work fine. Um, that's a cool ship. The plan is going smoothly. <laughs> He's stealing his brain cells, Sifrin. Um, cool. All right, that was all of the Negevs. That didn't take too long. It's going to be quite a, a quite a last per morbid. All oh, the jokes. It's going to be quite a, a tight vote, I think, on the Negevs, because there's only so many. I mean, only actually we end up with one bracket. Um, but that is the Negev vote done. So, if I just jump out the game, what does that leave us with? Well, there's only two ships left in Phase 2. And like I said, I want to go through all of them tonight. So we have a choice now between the Archangels 
or the Nimrods. Um, there's a decent number of Nimrods. Nimrods is an escort ship. Um, yeah, the engine plays the side already 51s. I'm sorry I didn't highlight those, but they were pretty cool. Uh, what do we think? Do you want to do the Nimrods to get them out of the way? Or just want to straight into the arc? Okay, Golden Flu was the first one in with Nimrods. Let's get the Nimrods done. There aren't too many of them. Yeah, saving the archangels for last is a good shout. All right, Nimrods are loaded. You know what I'm gonna do? No, I'm not gonna do that. Nimrod range budget. I should be able to check that in game, I hope. I think I have the Nimrod unlocked. Should be unlocked. Okay, game's coming back up. Yeah. Exactly. They're just they're just the 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 palette cleanser from the large ships that we're going to have before we look at the big boys. Uh, do I have the Nimrod? No, I've got the Nomad. Let me grab the stats on the Nimrod. Nimrod search. Okay, the default cost for the Nimrod is attack heavy Corvette. Uh, so the default price is 14160 and the range is 940 kilometers. Its standard armament is one Mark II 180 Sarmat um, and two Zeniths. No other weapons. It's good at what it does, which is carrying a big gun. But let's see what other people have done with it. Now, for the first time, we don't have an AGS system ship as our first entry. We have the Boyar from Nazareth. I feel like I've got lore for this. I do. The Boyar, often called a flying chair, is a dedicated garrison ship. A flying fortress with, with a double-barreled Sarmat gun performs greatly while defending military bases and outposts from pirates and nomads. At a affordable price means that boys are hard, not, hard, not hard to meet while traveling between Romani cities. It's a nice balance with tankiness and firepower. Um, it's n I'm, I haven't decided exactly when I'm going to be doing the Varya exhibitions, but I'll make sure to announce it very far in advance. Usually I like to stream Tuesdays and Thursdays, Golden Flip. So this is a this is a Wednesday for me, which is not when I usually like to stream, um, but I couldn't do it last night. I was just too tired. Let's check out the... Ooh. It's just a nice redesign of it, really. Um, it's... So what do we look at? It's over budget? Oh, no. Yeah, it's over budget. Oh no, but we need to add the 5% to the 2-2. Two, two, um, so it is, it is in budget. Range is fine as well. Oh really? Scratch test, I'm sorry about that. Did it end up in here? I must have, that must be my mistake. Um, we haven't done Intrepid voting yet, have we? I can maybe fix it back over. Can you, can you PM me on the Discord and I'll get it fixed. Um, but we've got one Mark II 180 star map. We've got two Xanas, same, same as the standard one. Yeah, two, three, three, seven, three. So it is in budget. It looks nice, cute little ship. Toast with 187 kilometers per hour. Um, very heavily armored. Looks good. Yeah, the wiki's probably outdated, Lynn. Um, all right, let's take up next. We've got the um, Stalker by Thomas Green. Sorry, uh, yeah, this should have a different name, I think. Let's check that out. Ooh. Ooh, it's like a, a little courageous ship. Um, two D80 Molots, top speed of 335 kilometers per hour, a mix of spread of, of armor and reinforced hull. Huge range of 1140, and it's well in budget. Um, that's a cool ship. We've got two Zeniths in here as well. Um, that's that's a really nice design. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. For 222, that 2D Molots is, is nice. It's a little bit of a higher rate of fire than the Sarmat, which unfortunately does have a very low rate of fire. Um, that's a cool ship. All right, moving on. We've got the... Ah, here we go. Here's the AGS system ship. Um... The Raiju by AGS Systems. I do have lore for this. Uh, the Raiju uses extended wings to detonate proximity fuse shell early in combination with Palash. So this Nimrod has Palash. <laughs> Where is your Palash? Here it is. It's got a four-way Palash. Um, I think that I think that wiki's been abandoned for a while, unfortunately. Um, it has two D80 Molots, uh, top speed of 484 kilometers per hour, and it has big wings for destroying um, incoming proximity fuse rounds before they come in. Need some bombs, yeah. These are nice bomb bomb trays, aren't they? Um, it's in budget and it's within range. That's a cool cool submission on the hands. Are we calling them hands? It looks like a little monster. It looks like it's going to come at you like rocking backwards and forwards. Like, um, why is it cursed um, Crusader? 
what is cursed about it apart from the fact that it's shaped oh it's is it oh it's because the uh the um the palace is behind the engines isn't it the, these are supposed to protect against proximity fuse these ramming spears that's what they're supposed to do all right next up we've got the tango by corazon ray we'll get i want to get through these reasonably quickly because we have the archangel still to go the tango show of hands who knows why tango palace was so revered among the soldier of the time uh Weight distribution and survivorship bias? Ha! All right, watch this clip from the time and I'll quiz you. Let's dim. The Tango class. With the ability to complement any other ship on the battlefield and the capability to hold its own solo, this is our premier escort ship. Dancing is like warfare. It takes two. Come dance with us. I like this. That's good. All right, let's check out the Tango from Corazon Ray. Except I can't get into the game. There we go. Oh, interesting. I love an asymmetrical design. This feels like another ship that was submitted, but had the design flipped the other way around. Um, we've got two, three sprints. We've got a tracking radar, two strike craft, two DAD Molots with full coverage, top speed of 162 kilometers, which means it's not the fastest or most maneuverable ship. Um, are we in range requirement? Yeah, we are. And we're also in budget requirement as well. It's, it's actually, a, I have a soft spot for funny looking ships or ships that are asymmetrical or fit like a roll above um, their aesthetics. I, I love it a lot. I actually really like it. Um, it, is, it is a cool ship. Thank you very much for submitting this. I hope we get it gets through to round two. Um, we've got the Super Courageous A from Crash Test. Now you're saying that this was actually an Intrepid submission. So we need to keep that in mind when we load this up, but let's check it out. It needs a rose in its hair, it does. Um, oh, I can see why I maybe thought it was a Nimrod. Maybe I opened it up to check, but we've got full Palash. We've got our Mark II 180 Summit, and we've got a top speed of almost 300 kilometers per hour. The Super Courageous R was based off the A. I can see that. There is, there's, um, I like these raised uh, D30Ss, by the way. I like where they're positioning, where they're positioned. Um, we're in budget, we're in range. This is this is a good submission. Excuse me one second. You've, you've managed to keep that feel and shape of the Courageous really nicely, especially with the sloped armor, the sloped hull components here on the hull and the um, generator. And yeah, I like the Palash as well. It's cool. Proxy fuse is, a, is an issue, but it's it's hopefully going to be fast and maneuverable enough to get around that. Um, nice, nice submission. Sorry that I'm going through these quite quickly. I just, I know what's next. It's going to take us a little bit of a while. So next up we've got the Divine from Cygnus. Um, I don't have any lore for it. I've got lore for the Astral, the Citadel, the Cupier, but not the... Oh, here we go. Uh, the response to the sector defense level is a vessel defined, built to take a high caliber fire and do its own. Cool. Let's check that out. Two DD Molots, top speed of 371 kilometers per hour. In range, in budget, I think, if I'm, if I'm right. Two Zeniths. It's just an upgun of some of the other smaller designs we've seen, but two DD Molots is a good design. They are in reinforced hull crash test, that's right. They should hang on for a little bit longer. Um Another good another good design. I, I'm I don't have a lot to say about solid ships. This is a solid ship because even though I'm not saying a lot doesn't mean I don't like it. It's really, really good. But you can't really talk a lot about a good ship without kind of repeating things you said before. It looks good, it's well armored, it's very fast, it's got good guns. This is a good shout. All right, next up, we've got the Snowball from Ensign Foil. Um, these ships have all been hilarious. So the Snowball is another prototype ship. The Snowball mounts an experimental armor plate. It is quite light for its class, but it has ample firepower with 400 millimeter guns. Because it didn't make it through production, no fire suppressants were installed. Well, that seems like an oversight. That is, the, the, um, that is an interesting armor plate. Um, and we have four AK-100s with almost perfect coverage, thanks to some heresy with positioning it underneath the fuel tank. Um, we've got quite a lot of engines, top speed of 148, which is surprising for so little engines. Because they're all vectored thrusters, this engine can't, this ship can actually rotate as well, and in the hands of a good pilot could keep putting this armor between it and the enemy. Something to bear, something to think about. We're in price, we're in range. Different design, something different. I think that's completely right, Lynn. Yeah, it's wordplay. There's, it, it doesn't have a chance. Um, we, we are not to forget they're writing character sheet for pen and paper RPG, not min-maxing. Um, if it gets set on fire, it's dead anyway. You're right. There's, there's nothing to do about it. I'm surprised that these uh, skateboards can launch, considering they're behind armor. Um, 
It would make a good rammer, actually, Crusader, you're right, but it isn't very fast, sadly. Okay, next up, we've got the Firefox from Funky Furry. Um, two 130mm. 130mm hasn't been particularly common in the build. Sadly, the bridge is just a little bit... Um, uh, what's, what's the word? It's a little bit elevated. I think, without rebuilding this too much, if you got a piece of hull here and did this... Sorry for the sacrilege of just taking someone else's build apart. You could deal with that elevation problem and get full coverage, but then you got this bit sticking out the bottom, which is probably why they didn't do it. You can use triangle pieces as well, yeah. Yeah, you could just use a cut corner block, that's right. Um, I could put it in either place. So yeah, it, it, the elevation problem is fixable, is what I'm trying to say. Um, 2D, 2, 2, 2D30Ss, um, uh, and yeah, you can just use the smaller ammo pieces as well. There's lots of ways to fix it. Nice armoring on the side here, don't, uh, don't, don't miss that. It, it's very heavily armored on the side, and I kind of like the chunky blockiness of it. Um, total speed of 186, actually let me just reload it because I've broken it again. Total speed of 182 kilometers per hour. Um, range requirement is tough but close. Um, price requirement is under budget. This is this is a fine little ship. Um, I, what, what I wanted to say was the, uh, this is a 180 millimeter. I mistook it for 130. Thank you, Neil. Um, the 180 millimeter cannon, it's a heavy gun on this ship. It's just replacing the Sarma with, instead of having one ship, you've got two, one gun, you've got two. Nice ship. That's really nice. Okay, next up we've got the Nimrod Mark One. From Kipco. Let's get the old uh, text up. Nimrod. The original Nimrod wasn't particularly threatening with its limited budget and a large Mark II 180s that weren't particularly good against small craft, but the standard design isn't sturdy enough to deal with against medium and large threats. This design ignores the brawling aspects to focus on anti air and tactical ballistic missile capabilities. Both feature two A100s and a built in radar to allow their use. Both variants feature equivalent budgets and endurance. The armor is strategically positioned to survive incoming missile strikes. The Nimrod 1 features a single 37mm deterrent for aircraft, small vessels and incoming missile strikes, and it exchanges a 37mm hardpoint for an FCR and sprint missiles, improving its tactical survivability. The Nimrod 1A forgo forgoes the sprint capability and adds a second 37mm, allowing it more comfortably engage in knife fight encounters. Alright, so these are more support ships. So here's the Nimrod 1. Lots of sprints. We've got six sprints. We've got two A100s, like mentioned, and we have one 37mm. I like the side mount on the 37mm. Um... I like that a lot. That's cool. Uh, we've got radar and FCR on this as well. So it's got the capability to detect you far away. A good support ship for a... Um, ah, Tacos. I think I mis messed up my Nimrod submission by accidentally writing with the Imperial. I have a copy of proper design though. I'll send it through Discord. Cool. If it is the wrong one, Tacos, we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, let's have a look at the 1A, which is the additional gun. So we've, we've, we've given up on the sprints for two 2A37s, I see. I think I actually prefer the version with sprints. Mostly because I think that's the one that's going to give me the most hassle. Um, and I also just like these sprint configurations that people have come up with. They look really cool. But that's a nice ch twist on the um, the Nimrod, making it more of a, of a strike group support ship. All right, next up we've got the Burke from Marcus, um, which I actually have some lore for. Let's get that loaded up. Uh, the Burke. The Burke was designed as a replacement for the Nimrod with more versatility. It has higher range speed and boasts a larger variety of weapons. Instead of the Compass 180 Sarmat, the Burke uses two 2A37s for air defense and a single Mark 180mm as the main weapon. Um, the 237mm is allowed to continue fire while re when reloading its main weapon, and similarly allowed to defend missiles and aircraft. Um, as mentioned in your video, the Nimrod was frequently destroyed by aircraft and missiles before your fleet would engage. This makes it much more difficult, so you built towards the, my um, notes, which I really like. Despite the increased firepower and engine capacity, the Burke manages to maintain the same level of armor by redirecting the majority of armor towards the top of the ship. It is definitely a bottom fighter. Its slash larger engines and heavy top armor make the best place for it to be the bottom of the battlefield. The top armor also contributes to allowing the Burke to survive more hits from aircraft. The Burke is slightly more expensive, but falls on the 5% leeway. It has escaped from 70% of the crew and is perfectly able to land without taking damage. The most vulnerable part of the Burke is undoubtedly the bottom layer of the ship, but its vital components are located far away. The lower two engines can be hit frequently, but the two T30 engines at the bottom, at the top, allow it to remain in the air. Overall, the Burke tries to fulfill the same mission as the Nimrod, but has added capabilities to help lessen some of the weaknesses of the original. I do like the name as well. That's a really clever name. Um, let's check that out. Oh, I like it. I actually really like it. We've got the same design of the this kind of side armor, which I was actually most over expecting to find a, a Zenith inside, but the Zeniths are here. Two Zeniths, two A37s, one 180 millimeter. Top speed of 229 kilometers per hour. Um, two through three on price. It has the range. 
Solid contender. Really good ship. I like it a lot. I like these little armored hats we've got here. They've done the best they can to protect as much as possible. They haven't put any um, components in this lower layer that they can get away with. Um, so they've moved all the fuel tanks and FCS up so that it's a bit more protected. That's a clever, clever build. All right, we've already looked at the Hearn, I think. No, it's the Reju. So this is the uh, the Hearn from Shogun. Ooh, this is quite big for a... Uh, um, this is very big for uh, a Nimrod. We've got 180 millimeter cannon. I don't see any other weapons on it. Also don't see a... We've got four Zenith. There we go. We've got four Zenith at the top. Top speed of 144 kilometers per hour. Um, range is fine. Price is fine. It's quite interestingly armored. It kind of looks like it's a more compressed ship that has uh, extended itself out. Um, like it's deployed its, its side wings and things, uh, which is interesting. It looks like it compressed down. Um, it looks pretty solid. We've got protected engines. That's the main thing to look out for. Try to use um, reinforced armor here. Tacos, you just got where I was going to. It doesn't like it take quite a lot of firepower before it starts falling out of the sky. Um, this is this is another solid solid contribution. Maybe if it has one weakness, it's a little bit undergunned. But it's very tanky. A billion small fuel tanks. I don't even want to try and count how many fuel tanks there are there. Um, it only has one FSS. There's your weakness. Um, once it catches fire, it's going down pretty quick. Cool ship, though. Next up, we have the Bloodhound from Sifrin. Let's check this out. Ooh. Interesting. It's a Bloodhound. It's going to search you out, and it's going to deal with you. Um, top speed of 367 kilometers per hour. Um, fine for range. Fine for budget. We've got the big radar. We've got FCS. We've got six sprints and a little minigun. That's a cool redesign. A cool new direction to take um, the Nimrod into it as again as a support ship for the strike group. Um, yeah, that's really really cool. All right, I'm gonna take a, a very quick break just to refill my water. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'll just leave you with the music and I'll actually just leave the ship on the screen. I was gonna put my be right back on, but I will be two seconds. I will be right back. Bear with me. Thank you.
All right, I am back. So sorry about being away for so long there. Um, the cat wanted a pat and I couldn't turn him down. Right, so that was the Bloodhound from Sifrin, which is a design I really like. Um, just looking at the chat that I've missed. I think it would be really good in player hands, this ship. It would be really good. I don't know if the AI would make as much use of it as the as a player would. Um, Archangels next to our hand. Yep, we're going to do them. Um, all right, let's go on to the Nimrod by Slomzink. I haven't seen a Slom ship in a while, I don't think. Oh, so we've, this is an upgunned. I think this is an upgun, even though it's got less barrels. It's got one 180mm cannon instead of the two, but it's got two AK-100s. Top speed of 201 kilometers per hour, so it's a decently speedy ship. Have we lost the range requirement? No, it's got such a tiny range requirement, we're fine. We're within price as well. Um, interesting, we've been able to mount the engines fully within the hull pits here, which is quite well done. Um, that's not very easy to do. We've got good elevation as well, not that we need it. Um, any active defenses or anything? I don't think so, we can't really afford them in the budget. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, small bit of heresy here. They managed to do it, good for them. They've managed to get it work, we'll allow it the heresy. Um, cool little ship. All right, next up we've got the Geist by Strawman. Be liking Strawman's ship so far. Let's check this one out. Ooh, we've got two KH-15s, two Zeniths, and two AK-100s, which is actually a decent little armament. We've also got the um, MR-12 tracking radar, so this thing's going to launch its missiles at you. Um, unfortunately, their KH-15 is not A-100, so it can't make use of the active tracking on the... Um... Oh. The, my other anymore submission may be missing alongside a resubmission by Archangel. Should be a file marked. Wisp. Oh, I'm really sorry that I've missed that straw one. I'll have to look it out. This is a cool ship, by the way. Um, I have to find out what's going on there. Can I get you to... I don't know if you're on the Discord or not. Can I get you to ping me there, just to remind me after the stream? Because I'm not going to be able to look for it right now. Unless you've got it handy and you could upload it. Um, this is a cool ship. I like this a lot. 223 kilometers per hour, so it's pretty fast as well for what it's doing. Um, I would, if I was to make a comment on it, I would say swap these out for A100s. Um, and or you just tell me what the tweak is. Like, we could just we can just have the, the final one. And thanks. Um, the vote on it later, but yeah, if these were these were A100s, you'd be able to use the, F, the FCR to actively track targets. Um, uh, but I got to the KH15s do have the longer range, is probably why you've gone with them. Uh, but that's another, another cool Nimrod redesign, and it, feel, it fits the profile of a, a, a Nimrod in terms of its visual profile quite well. No, no, that's your ship. You do whatever you want. I'm just offering some um, some interesting feedback. I like the KH-15s for the reason that they're longer range. Next up, we've got the Anvil from Tech Guy. Mm. So where's your money gone, Tech Guy? Because you've got two AK-100s here, and you had a Sarmat. So there's 2,000 missing. Uh, do you have any engines? Or is it just under budget? I think it's just under budget. Uh, 332 kilometers per hour is a nice speed. Very heavily armored as well. Yeah, it has a hat. Um, uh, the previous ship was under range. I thought it was Lin, Lin, uh, Lin Serp. Armor is expensive. Yeah, that's a good point. Armor is expensive. Um, it, look, it's a nice ship. I was just wondering, like, where, where, did, where did your money go? But uh, you've managed to get more speed out of it, which is good. The ship is 956. That's a shame. It's so close to being on on for a range. Um, that's another nice design. I like that a lot. I keep saying I like that a lot. I'm obviously getting tired because I'm just reusing the same phrases over and over again. I promise you I'll be more diverse in my comments for the Archangels. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. All right. Silent Snack has made us the Jester. Let's see what they've got. You're gonna use it on the Varyag, this this nice, okay. I'm looking forward to your Varyag submission then, Dagos. Ooh, uh, another, air, another aircraft carrier. We've got quite a lot of Nimrod aircraft carriers. Um, we've got uh, 57 millimeter gun here. That's the only weapon. Four, um, sorry, three LA-29s. We've got, is this an, um, an IRST? Yeah, infrared session track. Um, so it's gonna detect you with those. Oh. Hang on a second. Uh, team, even if you're there, we've got some spam, but I can deal with it. Let us um, hide user on this channel and that should ban them. Yeah. It is a mobile runway, exactly. Oh, the spam bots, that's okay, I already, I already did it, Taven. Thank you so much for being there though. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, I've been getting them for ages, Sifrin. I got them when I had like no viewers. The, my only viewers were um, spam bots for ages. It's actually one of the reasons why uh, the, the filter is so tight on my channel. Um, YouTube offered me a, a tighter like spam filter, but it, actually all it does is suppress comments from viewers and doesn't do anything about the bots, so I need to turn it off. Another cool little mini carrier. Also, I want to point out that this fuel tank is actually very lightly attached to the hull. Um, there's space on either side of it, which is an, a, a fascinating design choice. I wonder if it's to try and stop the fire spreading because the only ways you can spread are through where the FCSs are. Um, 
Look at this. Raid Shadow Legends spam sponsors. <laughs> None of those yet, sadly. It has two KH15Ps built into the superstructure here. I thought they were supply. I thought they were support pylons, but there's actually hidden missiles here that can launch. So some heresy involved for certain for them to work, um, but they are there. So don't believe your eyes. That that's a sneaky secret for later. Um, what was the name again? Uh, the Jester. Yes, um, it's going to surprise you. This ship. This ship could potentially have made it all the way through voting. And if it had won, it could have made it into the campaign without me realizing it had missiles on it. Yeah, more than meets the eye definitely sums this ship up. A layman would not notice those missiles. All right, almost at the end of the Nimrods. We've got the baseline from Tacos. Let me get my lore folder open. Um, Tacos. No, the base side. A supremely nimble fleet interceptor, the base side is a rather common ship to see in Garrett. Being another ship that has had its design become essentially common knowledge to most workshops and manufacturing firms. While it has been supplanted somewhat by the Lightning, there are those that still swear by the base line, setting its 180mm Sarmat as providing better ship killing firepower than the twin AK 100s of the Lightning. Mm, well, that's debatable. I mean, there's not much that's better than the Lightning. Who's to say there aren't already hidden missiles in other designs? You are completely right, Derp. Ooh, I was expecting a smaller, faster ship from the description, but we have a Sarmat and four Vimples, perfectly elevated, so there's no issues. Well, there's, there's just fuel tanks everywhere. This, so That's right, it was overwritten. This is the Imperial. Right. Okay, let's see. So we'll leave the ship for now, and now if you've um, sent me it through, I'll grab it from uh, Discord between the things, and we'll just look at it quickly. Let's check out the M11 Eringi from t -Rem. Oh, it's 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 another mushroom sip, but this time it has the Sarmat. It has Palash as well, so it's very well defended. Cool. All right, that was all of the Nimrods, apart from Taco's one that we're gonna look at. It is a baby, isn't it? It's a baby. It's very small. Um, submissions are still open, Neutron C, for anything that hasn't been covered in Phase One and Phase Two. Specifically, the Variag, the Nomad, um, the there was another strike. Group ship that was in it. I can't remember off the top of my head everything that's in it, but pretty much everything that hasn't been covered. Um, and it does make his aesthetics obvious, doesn't it? I actually really like these ship designs. Oh, good. All right. Oh, Lynn, if you say, it, it, I think it got removed from chat because I didn't see what you said before. Hang on. Uh, there you go. I made your thing with people. Variac Nomad, Gladiator MRL. That's right. Thank you, Benny Hidden Mishaps. Um, okay. Let's uh, get the high fleet closed down and we'll get the Archangels loaded up. And I'm very excited. Hey Kip, it's been a, a great stream so far. Your ships have been great. We're about to load into the um, Archangels. I'm sad you're about to miss it. Right, let me grab these and I'll grab those files off of... Off of... Um, sorry, my brain's going to go off of Discord. Is that... Ooh, I'm a little bit nervous about the Archangels, actually. Uh, let, let me check Discord. I might do yours first then, Kip. All right, Strawman. I've got your Nimrod and your Archangel. I'll just download both of those and throw them in here. Uh, desktop, High Fleet, Ships. That's the Nimrod Wisp. And the Revenant Archangel. Did anyone else upload anything? No, I don't, don't see anything. All right, let's get High Fleet open back up again. Yeah, I'm really excited for the Archangels. We'll do the Kipco ships first since you need to head to work. I totally appreciate that. I know my timings for streams aren't the best. Actually, I want to do that Nimrod first just while everyone has Nimrod still in their head, so bear with me. So this is um, the Strawman. Sorry, the Wisp from Strawman. I'm glad that the requirements made it more thought-provoking rather than frustrating. Because I knew some people were frustrated by them. <laughs> Thanks, Tavian. Ooh. 
This is an interesting ship. I'm glad we got to look at it. Two AK-100s, um, two KH-50 missiles and sprints in a very cheap package for 2330. Um, it's okay, Lynn. It's all right. It, it, it's, typo's a typo. 5 p.m. for you, Lynn. That's, uh, not many people get good times with him. Yeah, real Australian hours. It's uh, currently 1 a.m. for me on a work night. Um, so I need to get this wrapped up really quickly, but I don't take, don't rush it too quickly. I really like this ship. This is a very cool Nimrod um, a submission. I'm glad we got to check it out. Thank you very much, Strawman. Um, so that is the Wisp from Strawman. Um, okay, so you, you actually want to replace them for A100s. No problem. It's late for me, but I want to get the Archangels done. It's all good. I'm working from home tomorrow. But, but the, the Archangels are right here. Okay. You people are so nice. Um, we could maybe do an Archangel stream. Um, another night, I suppose. We've gone through everything else. Um, yeah, okay. You, you're right. I have been streaming for a while. It is late. I have noticed that my ability to describe has gone downhill. Um, I'm just so excited to see them. But 1 a.m. is late. Um, but we, at least we got to check the, door, the Nimrod. I will make sure the rest of the Archangel submissions are right. Tomorrow, everybody, I'm going to try and get voting up for everything in phase one that isn't already up. If you haven't voted, please check the description of this video. The flower vote and the ballistic vote are linked in it, and I'm going to be closing those tomorrow. And I'm going to get the rest of the voting up. So that's the Gladiator, the Intrepid, the Navarin. They're all going to be up for vote. Um, and uh, we will. I will put on the Discord an event for when the Archangel... It, reveals is going to be i might try and do it possibly friday or saturday night we'll see um also we have a community stream on sunday um nebulous fleet command has the modded missile update coming out on saturday and we're going to sit down and play it uh, as a community so get some games up against people on our team up against some ais if we get smashed or get some other people in the community see how it goes try out those new missiles it's going to be great um yeah if you haven't joined already, join the Discord. Everyone's really friendly on it. Um, people are being amazing. I uh, love all of you. You're fantastic. Thank you so much for hanging out. I am clearly babbling. So I am just going to hit the ending soon button. Wish you all the very best. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your submissions. They are fantastic. I have had so much fun with them, especially Ensign Foil's pirate ships. What a surprise that was. Um, have a good night. I will see you all later. Ciao for now.